What's up? What is happening, Ron? You're on mute, my friend. Just unmute yourself, please, if you don't mind, then uh, we'll get the show on the road. What is up? How you hey, doing? Everything's good, man. I'm glad to be on your show. Oh, after, I... after all of this time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What is it? I don't know. It's probably been 13, 14 months since I first asked you, whatever. But uh, no, it's, I'm, I'm super, super happy to finally have you say yes and ready to do it, you know? So, well, uh, you know, Nick was paying me to keep off of your show. He wanted me to do it. <laughs> so hey, the, Nick, bribe, the bribe money finally ran out. <laughs> Nicky B, you got to send some of that cashola this way, brother. But uh, no, no, I'm, I'm super, super stoked. And, and so you know, Ron, so I. Unless, like, I, I kind of, you know, my memory is good for some things and kind of bad for others. So I can't quite remember, but I think, I think that you're the first collector to come on who is, like, you know, a, a, a primarily unpublished art collector that I'm doing a show and tell with. I, I believe, unless I forgot somebody, I think you're it. Um well, I can even go a step further than that. Not only am I one of those guys, but I don't read comic books now and I didn't grow up reading comic books. So let's start from that. We are gonna start from that. But before we do, before we do, I also wanna let everybody know that because tonight's show and tell is made up, I say primarily because there is one published piece. Um, other than that, it's all unpublished stuff. So because there's no connection to a story, in other words, you know, a comic book story where these images come from. Um, my expectation was or is that we would have less talking to do for each piece. And because of that, rather than the usual 20 pieces that we show on a given show and tell, I've got 40 slides instead of 20. Oh. Plus some of them, a few of them have two pieces each. So we're going to see a heck of a lot of art tonight. Hopefully, hopefully what, you know, what I'm presuming will happen does happen and it'll flow nicely and we get to see everything. Um, but I think, I think we will, I think we can do it. So yeah, it's going to be good. And yeah, you'll, you'll tell us all your story and stuff. But before we get to that, if you don't mind, uh, give me a few minutes. I just want to do a couple of promos for a few friends and then jump into the chat and man, there's a lot of people waiting for us. Uh, ton, like already 52 comments. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to have to skip a lot of you and I'm sorry about that, everyone. But um, yeah, let me jump in and do the, the, the promos real quick first. Um, let me see. Who do we start with today? Okay. We're going to do Lee Parmeter. Lee, I don't know because I'm not in the chat right now. So I don't know if you are yourself currently in the chat, um, but I'm putting a link, everyone. So Lee did a two-part video this week um uh educational video about blue lines everybody's favorite topic um so yeah so there you go please check that out that's the page that'll take you to all the videos so it's the first two right at the top all right and um next after that what do we have ah carl so carl did another video and I always spoil too much, so I'm not going to say what it's about, but Carl's Collection, check it out, everyone. This is the um, link, direct link, right? You're well, very well. I see you there, Lee. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. There you go. You're very welcome. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, so there's the one for Carl and his latest video, I think. Yeah, there it is. Okay, excellent. And um, who else? Who else? Oh, good crowd. Ron, everybody's been waiting for you. Like 39 people waiting already. And there's going to be, there should be more because like they usually trickle in slowly at the, at, in the first few minutes. So everybody's been anticipating you. That tells me a lot, Ron. Wow. That's, that's real cool. That's really cool. Uh, let me see. Oh, and of course, the main man himself who brings us all together on Friday nights. Uh, so Nikki B, everybody, Nick, I actually found the link to this Friday show. It's always hit and miss. Um, so everybody, make sure that this coming Friday you check out the EXP, the original art experience, um, at uh, youtube.com slash the EXP. This link I'm putting in right here is the exact link to this Friday show. Um, so please check that out. And I believe that 
as far as promos go, that is it. Um, let me see. Take a quick check. Yeah, I believe it is because Karen did unfortunately not get her editing done on time and did not put out a video this past week. So I'm hoping that she is able to finally get it out this week. Karen, um, hopefully you, you heard this. I don't even know if you're watching or not. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll see something from you this week. Looking forward to it. It's been what, five weeks now since your last one. So everybody's waiting for you with bated breath. And um, I believe that's it, everyone. So that's it for the promos. Uh, if I forgot anybody, let me know in the chat and I will gladly um, promo you. Um, okay, so let me quickly, I'm going to do this real quick, everyone, because you guys are wild with the, with the comments. All right, Corey Rust from Nikki B Show. Welcome. The Rickster, what is up? What is up? Here we go. Hide your heart. Whoa, heart's going to be with me two times next week, everybody. He's going to be selling some of his collection. And Ron, you may want to tune in for that because he is a former big time commission collector. So some of the pieces available will be commissioned. So it might be a way to check that out. And I'm going to put you actually in touch with him personally, if you're interested, because he's got tons more that we won't be showing during the, the YouTube sale that I'm sure like if he'd be happy to show you what he's got in case there's, there's anything in there that be of, of interest to you, you know, always interested. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll put you guys together then. Um, number one Marvel fan, what's up, Tom? Hey, Gabe Carino, what is up? What is up, Dwayne Zapain? What's up, Jason? What's up, my friend? Good to see you, Lars. Man, hello, hello. Hey, been a while, Lars. Man, my wife, Vivian, hello, and thank you for the support as always, honey. I appreciate it. And uh, Mr. Red Jack, as always, good to see. You. I hope you're in good spirits today. The king of the sketch cover says, Marcus, what's up, Marcus? <laughs> CJ, what's up, my friend? Good to have you as always. Ronald needs to show how he frames them to make Ruben go nuts. <laughs> if he shows me and it makes me nuts, I'll tell him. You know me, I'm always honest. It's nothing personal. Uh, there you go, Mr. Dr Red Jack. Yes, yes. Uh, Vivian, okay. Oh, you guys selling, saying hello to each other. Jesus, what's up? What's up? Uh, 666, yes. Uh, Black Viper of Dorn. Is it a claim show? It is not. Looking for a $130 Art Adam sketch cover. I don't know, but it's not a claim show. Uh, yes, it was two minutes late. I know, I know. What are you, you going to do? Ron and I were talking. What do you want us to do? Relax. See, that's the beauty of this not being network television, though. We don't have to answer to anybody. We can be late, fashionably late if we want to. Greetings to you, Mr. Jeff Wedding. Um, speaking of always a good day for a uh, Jeff wedding, I almost bought Billy Idol tickets yesterday and thank God before I made the purchase, I remembered, oh, you know what? Let me just check YouTube for a recent concert to see if he still has a decent voice. Oh my gosh. Thank God I did that because his voice is so bad now. I decided not to buy the ticket. So Sorry, Billy. And they were they were gonna have a platinum Canadian band Platinum Blonde open up for them. So that would have been awesome for me. And now I'm sad. I'm I'm gonna miss that. But yeah, it, it was it was awful. Couldn't sing anymore. Um, Tom Kazalovsky, Chicago. What is up, sir? Of course, again, Lee. J oh, Hart. Uh, okay, all the same guys. Who else do we got? Anybody different? Uh, so Corey, no suede best, no best of, of any kind, actually. Um, Corey. Uh, Dan Evan, what is up? Good to see you, my friend. John Brown, as always, good evening to you. And uh, who else do we have here? Oh, well, there he is, the mayor of the man himself, Kenneth Bird. Hi to you, my friend. And uh, look how excited Dwayne is for you, Ron. Look at that. Look how he's giving you applause already. Uh, Ruben the Zet fan, yes, sir. The music fan in general. And we're going to see some, and you know me, art, music, both arts come together. We're going to see a little taste of that tonight. So that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to it. And um, gosh, Ron is a comic book hater. Why do you say that? It must have been something that I said earlier. Um, oh, because he, he's not buying, he, well, because of what he said, because he, he was not a, didn't grow up reading comic books, right? Yeah, I can't wait to get that story. Um, go for a hundred. Yeah, it's, it's you know, let's let's go with forty for now. That's, that'll be a challenge enough. 
Uh, Ron needs to show that awesome gold ring. Right. And that's what, yeah. Jeff, that's what Jeff told me last week. He was like, yeah. oh. Everybody Wait. kept calling me the infinity ring guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will, we will, I'll ask you to officially do it. You want to do it now? Do it now. Let me go get the, um, I got to get. You're not wearing it? I'm wearing the, the one that was created, but I have to show you what it's based on. Oh, me, okay. I'll be right yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. I'll keep saying hello to everybody. Yeah, there's the rings. And, uh, oh, just, I got to you, Sherry. I got to you right after he left. I, I, I'm i sorry. Um, he'll be back in a moment. Give him a moment, and um, I'll let him know that you were here. And Ron looks regal. He looks good. He looks good for sure, man. And good to see you, by the way, Mark. And there you go. There's Nikki B. What is up, sir? Good to see you. And uh, Ronald is a guest deluxe. Yeah, the king of the rings. David Matt. Ron is the man. See, all the people that normally aren't here in my chat are here. Like Sherry. All right. So, Ron, David Mack is here saying Ron is the man. I work with David. Uh, and okay. He's my collection. Okay. Cool. Cool. And where is my? I'm gonna go. I should have. I should have marked it. Ah, oh, here we go. And Sherry Davis says, "Yeah, hey, she's Ron. a good friend, of, uh, good friend of my late wife." And uh, okay, friend. excellent. So happy to hear that. Oh, it's great to have some support come in and check you out. That's awesome. And almost done, everybody. Mister Easy Go Lucky, lovely to have you. Hello, hello. And oh, another one of your friends must be Day Shalou. Is yes. that how you? <laughs> Her name, last name. She always spells it out though. Her name's Catherine. But oh. Catherine, it's good to hear from you. Awesome. Awesome. Hey Catherine. Thanks for dropping in and supporting. Uh, Mr. Easy Lucky. Okay, five, okay, five, it's already. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was four of them were mine last night, actually, uh, Nick. Um CJ, okay, talking to yourselves. Yes, please, everybody, if you haven't done so already, if you're here watching, please hit the like button. I don't ask you ever to subscribe. Um, just hit the like. That'd be the thumbs up. That'd be good enough. I'd appreciate that. Um, so, CJ, you're talking to Karen, but I don't think she's here. I at least if she is, I didn't see her. Stop doing the darn family and parenting stuff and make a video. Exactly. Thanks, CJ. Let her know where her priority should lie, right? Norma Pullen, another friend of yes. yours. Another friend of mine. How you doing, awesome. Norma? Awesome. Great to see you, Norma. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, Lars, man, can't wait to see Ron's stuff. Uh, there's going to be a lot of it. Caesar, what's up? Good evening to you. Oscar Brathwaite, is that how you say it? How are you doing, Oscar? He's another friend of mine. Yeah. Did I say the last name properly? Yeah, though? Um, Braithwaite, yeah. Oh, it's Braith. Okay. Okay, so then Dougie in, in the UK, Dougie Braithwaite would be, I guess he's Braithwaite too then? He's, an, yep. he's another artist in the UK. So, okay, I guess that's... Um, I guess it should be Braithwaite. I always said Braithwaite. All right. Thank you for dropping in, Oscar. A lot of friends of yours dropping in. That's awesome. So glad to see that. Uh, Black Mike Rodorn just checked out his catch. 751 sketch cover. Yeah, yeah. And and you know what he told me? Because he he would probably would have. Ron would have said it later anyways. But I can't. I have to be the guy with the honor to say it. Ron told me when I said to him, you know, typically I do the picking just to save my guests the time. Um, so I put in the work and they don't have to, they can, they, they can just show up and, and sort of talk about the artwork. And then, um, I said, so you can do it if you want and send me scans of the ones you want to talk about, or I can pick. And Ron said to me, you know, whatever we, we decided I'll just pick them. But then Ron said, you know, I got 800 more pieces that I haven't put into my gallery. If you want, you know, we I can show you those. I'm like, what? Listen, it's hard enough, Ron, like I told you. It's hard enough for me to just look at everybody's galleries and narrow everything down to the typical 20 piece selection that I do, you know? So for you to have wanted to show me 800 more, you would have overwhelmed me so much. I would have just, I would have said, you know what? We got to cancel the show because it's way too much, you know? It overwhelms me and I own this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know how it is. Exactly. Let's go. Oh, I thought Billy last year he put on a good show. Okay. Don't worry, for every minute late, Ruben will ask 11 minutes, add 11 minutes to the show. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, you know me, Nick. Come on. You know it exactly. Uh, Ruben says is money, money. That's right. I saw Prime Minister Perfect Circle Christopher on Friday. I hope you had fun. I hope it was good. Uh, what else? Okay, so Nick. Okay, talking to Nick. I'm going to skip the private conversation so we can get on with the show. 
Oh, hello, Comic Art Austin. Just checking in to register your like and most importantly to say hello to Ron. But hello, Ron from Comic Art yeah. Austin. Um, good to see you in person. Unfortunately, I cannot stay, but we'll catch on rewind. Thank you. I appreciate it, Comic Art Austin. Or as we affectionately call you, Cab for short. Yeah. Your name's too long. Good to hear from Cab. Yeah. Um, what watch is Ron wearing tonight? Lars Man wants to know. It's go. a uh, Invicta. It's a Speedway from about 15 years ago. It was a diamond and a meteorite dial. It's nice. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice and big. I like the big monster watches, you know? Well, Very not big. I can't do the big ones because, you oh, know, yeah? hurt your wrist. This is like a 44 millimeter. They make them up to 63 now. Look like sundials on your wrist. I can't do that. <laughs> That's pretty big. To me, I consider that big. Mind you, I have really small wrists, so there you go, you know? Um, oh, another friend of yours came in, Shonda Ross. How you doing, Shonda? Thank you for dropping by, Shonda. And anybody else? Uh, let's see. Oh, see, when I said that I pronounced it correctly, because I said Brathwaite, he said, he, he Oscar's saying that I did. Maybe, Ron, is it possible that all these years you've known Oscar, you've been saying it wrong? I haven't known Oscar all that long, but I figure he knows, so I'm going to have to defer to him. <laughs> I was just going to call him Steve, but okay. We go with that. <laughs> well, Oscar, if you want to confirm one more time that it is indeed Brathwaite, I would love you. I would love it for you to confirm absolutely. That's awesome. Wow, it's so nice to be right on that all these years that I assumed that that was the name. Um, Ronald, you have lots of support this evening and very deservedly so, says Cab. Yeah, 50 people here now already. Wow. That's fantastic. Hello, here to see Ron. <laughs> I kind of figured that, Shonda. I, I, I've never seen you here before, so I, I figured you were here to see Ron. <laughs> thank you for coming in to support him. That's that's really awesome. Um, and to all of, of Ron's friends, thank you so much. Um, anybody else new I haven't gotten to? Here's one more. Catherine Hale, good evening, Ron. Good. How you doing, you. Catherine? She's a very good friend of mine, myself and my late wife. Awesome, awesome. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, Lars Man says he loves the watch. CJ says beautiful watch. Maki Poo Poo says massive bling. <laughs> uh, Marcus Wade, that Ruben, the tiny wrists, exactly. <laughs> uh, I am what I am. My man, Ruben, what's up, Gil? Always with great guests and discussions. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I can one up the 800 pieces for calf. I will only update my calf every time Ruben comments on a new piece. Uh, so let me know if you want to do a show and tell of, uh, or not. What's going to happen with that? You know, you got to do it. Um, oh, look at that. Nick saying that I know Doug, I'll say Brathwaite, and he said it like Ronald said. Really? So UK Doug says Braithwaite. And Oscar now is saying, well, he's not sounding it out, but he's saying yes again. So I'm saying it's Brathwaite. I'm going to go with Brathwaite for Oscar, at least, and Braithwaite for the artist. Okay? There you go. We're, we're both good with that. Yeah, there we go. All right. And um, Gil, you, Gil, you even have a Brathwaite, Braithwaite co-worker. Good dude. Excellent. Um you know what they say about small wrists, small <laughs> wrists, long shows. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, get some for a few more likes, everybody. Yeah, we got 52 people uh, watching here tonight, so that means about 12 of you watching haven't hit the thumbs up button. That's you know somewhere right below here. If you could do that, I'd appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Uh, yes, like Mr. Easy Go Lucky says, hit that like, 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 like. And my friendship bracelet gift to Ruben will have to go to child size. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Ron caused me hey, another one. Rob's beard. Ron caused me to have an infatuation with Invicta. Uh, that's Robin. Thank you, Robin. I'm glad you joined. Okay. And uh, yeah, she. Um, Invicta, you mean the, the fighting? Yeah, the I fighting? Got on buying watches years ago, so she blames oh, me. Watches. For okay. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh, Invicta. I was like, you talk, I thought you were talking mixed martial arts. Okay. No, no, that's the name of the watch company that the okay. brand I'm wearing today. <laughs> and look what Dwayne says. I'm digging this. All the community folks showing up, as well as Ronald's friends and loved ones. It truly shows what a beautiful person he is. Absolutely. So well said. I, I couldn't say it better myself, Dwayne. So very nice. That's what I love about doing this. You know, I, I, I tell people privately all the time, you know, that this show, I you know I do different types of series on my channel. But, you know, show and tell, 
on the surface, of course, I understand people think it's all about, well, let's let's focus on a collector and, and show some of their collection. And while it is about that, for me personally, that's secondary to just having the opportunity to get to know the collectors a little bit more on a bit more of a personal level and to get other collectors to know that person a little bit more, you know, put a face to the name and all that, you know. Um, so so that's that's what I love more so than even showing the art and talking about the art. So um I'm, I'm happy you said that Dwayne appreciate it um and 54 watching yes sir so I guess we've I've caught up to all the comments thank you so much everybody for your patience uh the Invicta infomercials are addictive infomercials in general always are um even if you don't buy anything yeah yeah and I'd hate to have to tell you how many watches I own from different brands but yeah I'm a watch collector too watch collector too okay okay awesome all right everybody so um We'll start the uh, a show and tell right now, but before we actually start showing some art, you guys know that I'd like to, as I said, get um, you all and myself to know our guests, the other collectors that come into the studio with me, you know, a little bit more, um, get a little bit of background um, about them and their collecting. And the thing about Ron tonight, which which is the, the one thing I've been kind of really looking forward to, because I knew this about Ron, but I know a lot of you don't. Um, is that, as I mentioned earlier, Ron did not grow up reading comics. So why don't we kind of take it from there, Ron, and just tell us whatever you want to tell us about that. I mean, my my dad collected, him and his friends, they collected comic books and traded them. But I just okay. never found anything interesting. But I was always interested in art. And I don't know if they had it in Canada, but when I was a kid, they had the art instructional school. They used to have these little matchbook covers. And he said, draw me, and you send it in. They oh, yeah. Well, sure. I've got picked up and ended up, my parents ended up paying for me to complete that course. Oh. Then, um, but I never got into the comic books. I had a, a few friends of mine that were real avid readers, but I always wanted to hang out and do other things. But sometimes while they were reading their new comic books, I had to sit around. So every now and then I would pick up a book like Werewolf by Night or uh, Ghost Rider or something like that. But I didn't follow along. I wasn't intrigued enough to follow along that was what happening to the characters or anything right. like that. So fast forward years later, I get out of the military and I ended up going to work for America Online back in their heyday. Wow. So I was there and I was there at the beginning of them starting to put graphics up online. Before that, it was just text-based. And one of the, my group was in charge of helping the custom, the the content providers put their content up online. So one of the customers we had for my department was Wizard Magazine. Oh, wow. And, um, the guy who was the editor of the online content, his name was Buddy Scalara. I know that name, sure. Buddy. And uh, so Buddy would come down to our offices in Virginia, and we got along, get to be very good friends. And he would bring me all kinds of signed comic books. He would bring me graded comic books. He would braid me all this stuff. So I knew that having something signed was pretty cool, but, and he would beg me to read the books. I tried, I just couldn't follow. I said, it's just, I can't keep up with this. So I would just collect the stuff. Sometimes he would give me comic books that were graded and I really didn't understand the whole grading thing. So I would open them up, take the plastic off of them and everything. Cause I thought that was odd. Now I should have kept them on, but everything he gave me that I would carry on. But he would say, look, please, I'm sending you this comic book. Please read it. You'll like it. I finally had to say, listen, you, we, we know that I'm not going to read it. And carry on. That was in the early 90s. So to this day, I still don't read any comic book. I can't keep up. Right. And so now I learned about comic books and characters from talking to other people. In the early 90s, I fell into collecting non-sports trading cards. So in the trading cards with the comic book stuff, I read about the characters on the back of the cards. So I didn't know. And I think comic book wise, I have a large collection of, I think I've got about six or seven long boxes of signed comic books. I've still mm -hmm. got graded ones. You saw how many sketch covers I have, you know, so those yeah. things. Are but I, I always liked the art. I ended up going yeah. to a two year school and graduated with a commercial art degree. But my career went in another direction, so I never did the art. I haven't picked up a pencil in maybe 40 years. Okay. So, but I never did it. But I just was never. So when I hear you guys talking about getting a page of this or a page from this book, this was the first comic book I read. 
I don't have that emotional connection to any of the books or the pages or anything like that. I understand, but yeah. I like the art. If I look on the cover and I see somebody, I can appreciate the skill it takes to do what these people do. So I was always intrigued with um, the art. So as I said, I would go to um, non-sports trading cards um, shows, but right. at shows they would also have comic books and they would also have comic book artists. So I would get to know those people. We have a show here called the non, um, what is it? Uh, it's an independent comic show. Um, it's called the Expo here every year, where all of the people. What, what city are you in exactly? I'm in I'm in Southern Maryland. I'm in La Plata, but the non uh, oh. the Expo is in Silver Spring, Maryland. Oh, okay. And I started going to that show because it's independent um, people producing their own comic books. So I would go along and look at the comic book covers. If I saw something that was interesting, I would go to that artist and said, "Listen, I like your stuff. Could you draw something for me?" Mm -hmm. They would take my little sketchbook and. Sometimes it would be a little quick something. Sometimes it would be detailed. Sometimes it would look like those sketches you see serial killers make from prison. And you just look and say, God, is, is that art or is that a cry for help? What the hell is it? <laughs> you don't want to say, just in case they are killers, you just give them a smile and a thumbs up and you just walk <laughs> as quickly as you can. Yes. So well, I ended yeah. up, over the years, I collected six volumes and I had them bound in leather. But this okay. is the first one. Right. And, and by the way, Ron, uh, Nick is asking, uh, were you talking about the, the, the thing called the Small Press Expo? Yes, the Small yeah. Press Expo. Okay. That's it. Every year that happens. So okay. I started. Oh, what what if, if just so I don't I don't want to forget. Sorry, Ron, I, I don't mean to interrupt you. Hydra was asking when you were at AOL, was that out in Ashburn? No, uh, that oh. was if I was I was there long before they moved to Ashburn. Oh. We were in Virginia, uh, Vienna, Virginia, had a couple buildings there. When I joined, uh, Air America Online had 400,000 customers. By the time I left, they had over 8 million. Wow. I was wow. there like two and a half years, but I was there towards the beginning before it became the big content provider and stuff that they had. Because, like I said, my I ushered in the uh, graphic part of it. That was my department, and I was a department of one. Oh, wow. Department too, but my boss got fired the first week and they said, you know, Ron, this is now your responsibility. Well, thank you for that. Wow. So we just kind of moved along and I collected the, um, like I said, the sketch uh, sketches. I would look at, I would buy the comic books from them, have them signed and I would just put them away, but I never read anything. There's nothing personal about it. I just, you guys are really passionate about that and I appreciate that, but yeah. So I I totally get it. The look, look, Black yeah. Viper, don't Black Viper of Dorn is even saying I've read less than a hundred comic books in his entire life. You know, I guess if you find something that you like and you stick with it, or you find a, a title and you stick with it, I just, I would try, and I said, you know, it's just a lot going on here, and I would yeah. move on to something else. It was easier yeah. for me to collect the artwork. Yeah, and you know what's what's and I find fascinating. I, I find it fascinating for I think for obvious reasons. But the thing is, you're not even as rare as you would think. I mean, Karen, who unfortunately, is, she dropped in to say hello and then she left. Um, but Karen, you know, I did a show and tell with her a year ago or almost a year ago. And she told us all her story. She also had not. She, so she's an art collector. She buys published art and some uh, commissions as well. And she she even had less of a connection to comics than you did. She never grew up at all with any kind of. You know, at least you could say, well, my dad, his friends or whatever had comics, right? So you were exposed to it. She had no exposure until she met uh, her and started dating her boyfriend at the time, now husband, uh, when she was like 31. And right. And, and and now, like a little over a decade later, like she's been for the last whatever, over a decade collecting artwork. But she still doesn't really she reads a little bit of comics. I mean, not new stuff, but like she goes back and reads old stuff. Once in a while, she doesn't have time to really read. But yeah, so it's I just find that fascinating. People that didn't grow up with this stuff and don't have that emotional attachment to it, but they still have that visceral visual attachment enough that it makes them want to spend good money on original artwork. I think that's fascinating, you know? Now, I always look at it, and I know a lot of people will say that, you know, if you get commissions, they'll never be worth as much as, um, you'll never get your money back. They'll never be worth what you paid for. Them. Right. 
But then um, published people say, well, you know, hey, I know if I pay this for a published piece, then it may um, accumulate in value. It may be this. But the bottom line is you guys say this or I'm talking about the people that collect published pieces. Yeah. You say, buy what you love, buy what you like. Right. Well, the commission side, that's exactly the same. Right. You know, oh, for sure. Find an artist you like. You like their work. I don't I don't do themes. So I talk to people, find out what they're really interested in. And we right. negotiate doing a drawing for that because if you have a theme and you say, hey, I only want people to draw Wolverine for me. Well, if that artist is a good artist, but he's not really familiar with Wolverine, he'll do a nice Wolverine, but it won't be his best work or her. So right. I find out what they're excited about and then get you know some premium artwork done. No, so, and the other side about value, I'll give you an example. I promised him that I would never say how much I paid, but I ended up working through Buzz and I got a, a full figure uh, Batman drawing from Neil Adams. Okay. Only because Buzz was completing a commission and Neil was looking at my book, my sketchbook is like a, a 10 by 14. And he looked at it and said he wanted to do something. And I told him I couldn't afford his prices. So he got back to Buzz and he they came up with a price that I could afford. He says, yeah. I'll do this so long as you never tell anybody what I charged you. And I okay. can't word. But the thing is, Neil passed away. So anybody that's a Neil Adams fan, if he's passed away and you can't, well, you're not getting any more work from him, would a, a Neil Adams fan, would they pay a premium for that Batman that Neil Adams did? Yes, yeah. he would. Right. So it, you know, it depends on the circumstances. But at the end of the day, I wanted to put together, I'm up to volume six now with the large book, which wow. is a 10 by 14. I had them leather bound because they were falling apart. Wow. Now people know those books. Let me show you. People know this is the first one well, after I had it leather bound. Each one's a different color. Wow. That's right? fantastic. Wow. So people know these books more than they know me. And then, <laughs> I, you know, if after I did the first couple, I wasn't going to do any more. Artists came to me and said, look, you can't quit now. I didn't get a chance to get in there. Or I like looking at the, uh, the artwork. You, you can't stop. So I've kept it up. Now I'm working on volumes five and six right now. Wow. But the, the but the thing is, I just wanted to put together some art. If somebody visited the house. I can give them the book and they could look and they would be interested and be happy with it. I never thought that it would become the big thing that it is now. Right. And uh, so if you've got Neil Adams and you've got some others in there, well, you know how much you paid for them years ago. But how much is the book? as a collection what is that worth so you never know but i didn't look at it for the money i just wanted to and then i post everything from these sketchbooks up on calf i do right. that but people have come to me from all over the world telling me how much they love the collection and how they look forward to the next thing that i post for that so that, it makes you feel pretty good about that for sure yeah well it's always it's always part of the fun of collecting i've always said you know sing collecting can be oftentimes a very singular solitary pursuit so i think i think a lot of us what we well certainly all of us who like to to get on youtube and and, and look at these sort of original art related youtube shows um we all do it because i i, be, I believe i mean i haven't asked everybody or taken a poll but i want to believe that the reason we all like to watch these shows is because of the camaraderie that it's it's always great to enjoy the art on your own that you're collecting and buying but when you find like-minded individuals who you can share with and they like to look at your art and you like to look at theirs it just adds another extra added dimension if you will another element to, to, to collecting um i don't know do you do you think do you, do you do you agree with that oh yeah i i do but with me I have a lot of different collections of a lot of different things when you have that collector's mentality. But with the artwork, when you're a collector, you always want to complete the collection. Well, when you're dealing with art, your collection is never going to be complete. Never ending. Yeah. Never going to be complete. And if you're one of the people like me that the art falls into a black hole and you don't trade any, you don't sell any, you just kind of look at it. And then next thing you know, there's over a thousand pieces of loose art. And you, besides what you've got in sketchbooks and things, the sketch covers started the same way back mm -hmm. when um, 
Authentics, I think was the first one. They had like a pencil drawing a reproduction cover and they had one little rectangle that was clear on the cover. And that's how the sketch cover started. Okay. I had a few of those. And when the other ones started to come out, the more full page and wrap around, oh, I said, look, I knew a lot of artists. It'd be cool to go to an artist and get them to do their interpretation of whatever or do their own thing. And I thought that that was a good way to go. So I'm happy that the people can look at CAF and see what I've collected over the years. And they appreciate it just like I appreciate some of their work. But that's how I find new artists, by looking at what other people have collected. Right. I can reach out to those artists and get, I've been doing, um, getting a lot of commissions from artists in South America, in the Ukraine, in Russia, in Europe, different parts of um, the UK, so France, Italy. And so all I've, over the world, right? Yeah, I've been all over. Now I don't send my sketchbooks because you know they'll never come oh. back. Yeah. You know, some guy in customs is just running down the road with one of my books. That'll yeah. happen. So, but it, I, it's opened my world up to other artists and people that I normally would never have met. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly. So that's that's what I love about it too. You know, um, it's the the connection. You know, with other people, whether it's other collectors or the artists themselves. You know, um, I think it's great. Look what Corey says. Corey saying. Uh, being on YouTube and watching CAF has really made my love for original art explode, maybe out of control. Um, yeah, and Mark says, this show lets us know the collector, which thank you, because that, that's what I was saying earlier. That's basically what the point is, for me anyways, that's the point. So thank you, Mark, I appreciate that, yeah. Um, no, no, so that's, that's great. Um, okay, so. Uh, Before we start. Yeah. Art. I want to honor what Jeff was talking about. So when the last Infinity Wars movie came out, was it 2018? After, towards the end of the movie, uh, end of that series, I was looking online for some reason, and I saw this. these people were selling, you know, like souvenirs, memorabilia for the movie. So this guy was, his company was selling a ring that was patterned after the Infinity War. So it had a center stone and then five stones around it and then had the names of the power stones on either side. So I bought it for like 30 bucks. It's made of brass. The stones are glass or whatever the hell they are, but it looks yeah. like glass. But anyway, so I bought this thing. Let me see here. See? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. It was like $30. So That's cool. I went to my jeweler and I said, you know, he's been making custom stuff for me since 95. And we were joking around with it. He loved the movies. And I said, you know, what would a ring like that really look like if you set out to turn it into a nice piece of jewelry? OK, what what would that be like? So we started talking and we started laughing. And the more we laughed, we came up with some ideas. I used some old gold, which he melted down and he did a wax cast and he did all kinds of work. So we talked about it and we put a little bit more into it and it, lag it lagged on for years and then COVID hit and nobody was really doing anything. So finally it was made uh, a couple years ago and uh, my wife said, okay, well, you got this ring. She kept asking me, how much is it? I said, I really don't know. Every time I asked my Julie, he said, don't worry about it. You can afford it, it'll be okay. Cause he wanted to do it as a birthday present. So I was turning 65 and he you said- oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You were turning, at the time you were turning 65? I'll be 67 this year. What? <laughs> I mean, Ron, it's so funny because I pretty much always ask my guests if they don't mind telling me, you know, how old they are. Um, and I was going to get to that eventually. But in my head, I was thinking more like, because I'm 53, and I was thinking, oh, you know, Ron's probably like around my age, like a few years older at most, you know, maybe no more than 57 that kind of thing what yes. wow that's awesome man well genetics and i lead a pretty stress-free life that that's that's what i have exactly the whole stress-free life thing that's what i exactly i i i, that's, I literally so, tried to do that my entire life so that i wouldn't age too quickly you know and so yeah. My wife said, well, you know, let that be your 65th birthday present. And my jeweler said, look, I really want to do this for you. So you'll just be paying for materials and stuff like that. So I'm not going to charge you Great. the whole thing. And I said, OK, that, that's cool. So we ended up going to Georgia that Christmas. My birthday's in December. So we went to her wife, my wife's family's place. 
we came back and then she was sick. She had shingles. She had the flu. She had all kinds of things happen. And then she passed away. But I didn't go pick up the ring. So she never got a chance to see the finished product. So anyway, this is what came out of it. Reality. Is that what it says? But so, so anyway. All right. You get that. Can you see it? Reality, space, time. Right. That's on that side. Okay. So you go on this side. Let's see. Power, mind, soul? Yep. Yeah. And oh. then if you look on the top, just like he had the, the stone in the center of his hand. Oh so the God. stones are, there's two types of citrine. There's a blue zircon. There's a yellow sapphire. There's a violet sapphire and a green savorite stone. And this oh. was the closest that they could come to the colors. And now it went from being a cheap piece of whatever to an 18 karat gold ring. And then I was losing weight. So he went and he built this little wing thing inside that I could adjust. Oh, so he the ring. Oh, that is, okay, because, wow, Ron, I can't tell you how excited I am to see that because I, I so I've lost a lot of weight since last summer and all my rings are loose on me now, including yeah. my wedding ring, right? I, I, I'm, they're, they're falling off me when I'm shaking water off my hands after I wash them, you know? And it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to lose my wedding ring. I, I, and I always thought, like, I know yeah, that I, they can make I it smaller, but it, I didn't want it to be cut. So he that, came yeah. back to do that i'll be happy to uh, give you my guys information he can do it through the mail oh, but yeah so i um so when we were at oax i was telling jeff and those guys a story but last year i went to the baltimore comic-con and jim starlin was there and he was sitting next to barry kitson and mm -hmm. i know barry so we were talking about the ring and everything so when jim showed up he they came and got him got me and said please tell old jim the story about your thanos ring and Jim sat down, he cried a little bit, and you know, he was very touched by the whole story. And I said, Hey, this is a one of a kind piece. It's never going anywhere. So mm -hmm. that was the story of the ring. That's and then awesome. doing OAX, everybody kept coming up and saying, Hey, infinity ring guy. They didn't <laughs> I was the infinity ring guy. <laughs> it's a pretty killer ring, I have to say, you know. So you got a great watch. You got and tons more watches you can swap out. You know now you got this killer ring. It's pretty cool. But do you do you do you? It's a one of a kind piece. So do you kind of have it more as a collection piece, or do you ever actually wear it? Oh no, I wear this this particular ring every day. Oh, My wow. tutor made another ring for me that I'm I'm even I'm embarrassed to even wear the thing. He put so many diamonds and things on it. It looks like you know I would rob myself. So I just right. it, it encourages and it encourages people to do the wrong things, you know. And this bracelet is kind of the same thing. He made that; it's all diamonds. And the only reason it's on my wrist because it has a weird locking system on it, and I can't get the damn thing off. So, <laughs> so I have to keep it on. And I work for the IRS, so you know I'm constantly pulling my sleeve down. I can't, you know, I don't want these guys asking me un, you know, uncomfortable questions. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. So you're actually an employee of the IRS now? Is that what that's Yes, I am. Wow. How long uh, for? I've been here since uh, September of 2018. Wow. Okay. Wow. So even through COVID, they kept you and that, that's been. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a federal employee. My job still goes oh. on regardless of. I don't, right. collect, I don't collect taxes. I don't, I don't spy on people. Yeah. I'm not responsible for any money that's taken out of your account. So don't send me any hate mail. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's not wrong everyone nope, not, not, me. Wrong. not me not at all anything you're mad about on your taxes your income tax returns whatever it's not wrong don't get mad yeah. at him those guys you can pick out because they sit alone in the cafeteria that's not me <laughs> they're all by themselves they got no friends you know except themselves i suppose you know <laughs> and you know it's sad because you know people ask you know what do you do for a living well i work for the federal government uh well what what agency and i said you know i just you know work for the federal government and as soon as you tell them, I work for you, they do it like this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, I, you know. <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. You see, guys, for those of you who 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 don't catch a Nikki B show on Fridays, I just want you to know, Ron used to be very, very super active 
every week on on Nikki V's show in the chat. And most of us knew him as that guy who's always like making cracking jokes, laughing it up. He's so funny. But most of us knew him as the guy making jokes about how his wife was going to kill him if he claimed any more art from Nick. And it was just always so funny every single time. A new, a new joke, always a new way to make the same, the same joke about his wife going to kill him or catch him or whatever. I just always thought it was so much. It was so just, yeah, I don't know. You were the life she, of that. She'd, um, she'd yell at me for another one. Are you in that computer talking about me again? Absolutely not, dear. I would never do that. That's so disrespectful. That's not me at all. And then, or she would yell. She would say, okay, all right, you've been buying stuff from that that Nick guy again. I told you, stay away from him. I said, Nick is a bad influence. He It's the peer pressure. He's threatening people. He's making them buy stuff. He's awful. I'm going to stay away from him. I would go in the computer and I would slide out and go into the next room. Are you in there with that guy, Nick, again? I said, absolutely not, dear. I'm looking at porn. She said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, thank God. Oh, porn. Okay, just yeah, porn. You know, so <laughs> I'm good with that. Okay. Let's get away from that Nick guy. <laughs> Nick, Nick says, Ronald doesn't love me like he used to. Well, you know, Nick. It's no fun anymore that Marilyn's not yelling at me, but you know what? I plan to be much more active and I plan to do your show too. I'm going to come up to New Jersey and I'm going to do your show. <laughs> David, hey, all the way from Australia. David Barr says, good day, Ron. Hey, good day. Um, so are we ready to look at some art? Well, yeah, actually, man, yeah. I, let I, me one see. One more thing before we yeah, look yeah. at sure. So anyway, when I was back in the day and I didn't know Nick, but I bought a lot of stuff from Dynamic Forces when they first started, autographed stuff. Oh, yeah. And I, I barely knew how to use the internet. It was the early 90s. Anyway, so I would order um, like different signed comic books and I had no idea what they looked like. I just, somebody would call me up and say, hey Ron, I got this signed and I got this signed and I would buy. So one day the guy, I made an order and the guy says, listen, I have another book. I'll give it to you for 20 bucks. And I said, no, you know, we had just been married. I didn't have that much money. So I said, you know, I, I think I'm going to pass. But he wouldn't take no for an answer. He kept saying, well, you know, I think you'll love it. And and it was the, the comic book where um, it wasn't the death of Superman. It was the one where he came back. And it was in a little okay. plastic bag. Right. Anyway, so he says, well, uh, it's not in the plastic bag. And I said, well, you know, that's not good. I don't want that. And I had just purchased one from another. That her name was Renee something or other. She was the one that used to run the Pittsburgh Comic Con. Okay. Well, anyway, this is before she started doing all of that. She Her business was she would go from con to con getting different artists and writers to sign comic books. And you would buy the collected thing from her. So I had just purchased one from her of the same book. And it was signed on the, on the white bag with six people that had signed it. And I said, well, how many people have signed this book? I said, it's already not in the bag. He said, only one person. I said, well, you want 20 bucks for that? And I've got one with six signatures on it. So then he says, well, you know, but well, it's a good book and, you know, be good for you. So I, we were going back and forth. I didn't want to do it. So he dropped it down to 10 bucks. He said, okay, I'm going to sell it to you. You just add it to your, you know, current stash and it'd be okay. And I felt bad for him. So I said, oh, screw it. I'll buy it. So a few days later, I get the book in the mail and I see that it's only got one signature and I'm looking through the book where it lists the writers and stuff in the book, the different artists. This guy's not listed on that list. So I'm thinking I got screwed out of 10 bucks. So I'm pissed off and I'm griping and griping. So I called Buddy Scalera. Buddy was who I answered because he knew about comic books and I did. So I said, Buddy, you know, I bought this book and I think I got cheated. I think I'm going to complain to somebody. I bought it for 10 bucks. And he said, that's signed by only one guy. He said, well, Ron, who signed the book? And the book was in another room. I said, I don't know. But it was only one guy and he's not even in the book. I think I got screwed. I got cheated. He said, Ron, go get the book and tell me who signed it. So I bring the book out and I glanced down at it and I look and I said, it's signed by Jerry somebody. And he said, Jerry who? And I said, Jerry Siegel. And he stopped. And he breathes in. He said, you have a signed Superman book by Jerry Siegel? I said, yeah, well, what's the big deal? And he said, idiot. He said, that's one of the creators of Superman. And Jerry died like the year after that. After I oh. So I had that book. Wow. So he was like, 
listen, I talk to you That's in true. and out and you never listen to me. You just don't. So I'm collecting non-sports trading cards and I go into this little hole in the wall comic book store. And while the guy's adding up all the old wax boxes and things that he had sealed up and I'm making a deal, I'm walking around the shop and in another part of the shop, he had these three empty uh, glass cases. In the last one in the dark, there was a little white box down in the, the bottom shelf and it was kind of open. And I can see this wooden box inside the white box. So I went over and asked the guy, can, can I see that? He said, yeah, pulls it out. I opened it up and it was a fancy walnut box with a brass plaque on it. I said, man, that book, you open it up, it had a velvet line, it had a reprint of a comic book in it, but I was more interested in the box. Right. And I said, you know, I really want to buy this. He said, well, it belongs to the owner. I can give him a call and we could um, you see if he wants to sell it. So the guy calls him up. He said, well, the owner says he wants to sell it for $150. I said, for the box? He said, well, you know, it's a whole thing. It's a comic book. I said, well, you can keep the comic book. I just want the box. And he says, no. He said, so we haggle back and forth. He says, okay, I'll sell it to you for $110. And this is, I don't know, like 90 or something like that. Wow, that's a lot of money and, at that time. And I said, okay. And I called, I had no, nobody had cell phones or anything like that. So I had to run to a pay phone and clear the sale with my wife because if I didn't clear it, I couldn't go home. Me and that box would be sleeping under a bridge. So I call her up. I tell her about how excited I was about this box. She said, well, what's in it? I said, the old comic book, but it's a copy. It's not even the original. So she said, well, if you really want it, you can get it. But I don't want to hear any more whining from you for the rest of the month about buying something else. Well, we all knew that wasn't going to work out for her, but yeah. I was humoring her, right? So we went. I go back to the store. I had to go to an ATM. I had to get the money. I go back and I paid the one to not even tax or anything. I just paid for it. So I get home and now I've got, I'm looking at the box and I'm looking at the comic book that says reprint inside and it's signed, but I didn't know who that was or anything. And now I've got buyer's remorse. I've spent 110 bucks. I got to look at my wife giving me the stink eye because now she's seen the box and she is less than impressed. <laughs> so now I'm like an ass, right? So I'm like, damn it, I got this. So I call Buddy up and I'm mm. telling him I'm crying and telling him my story. Buddy, I bought this thing, the box. I really wanted to put something else in it, put it on display. And he says, well, what is it? I said, it's X-Men number one reprint. And I said, well, I, I, it's a reprint. It can't be worth very much. So he said, OK. I said, but it's signed. And he said, well, who signed it? I said, I don't know, man. I had taken the comic book. It was in a heavy Mylar type thing. I had taken the comic book out and I had kind of threw it on the desk. Right. I was just looking at the box with the little velvet lining. So he said, well, who signed the book? I said, I don't know. Let me go get it. So I come out. And I'm still going on about this box and how much I like the box. He said, well, who signed it? So I got the box here because I still have it after all of these years. <laughs> and, we, and we are the ones who are blessed to get to see this awesome box from the great story. So this, this so should be here, uh, here is the box. <clears throat> OK, so right. it's a wooden box. Yeah, right. wooden box. Got a velvet lining. Right. Got this comic book in it. Okay. Oh, the milestone edition. Right. You Do know. you see who signed it? A Jack Kirby signature. Right. And it was before his wife was signing for him. So he actually signed this one. I didn't know who Jack Kirby was. I said it's signed by somebody named Jack. And he says, what the hell do you mean? Jack who? I said, Jack Kirby, whoever the hell that is. He <laughs> cut me out again. He said, you always fall ass backwards into stuff. And it was because I didn't know. Had I been more excited about it, the guy wouldn't have made a deal for me. <laughs> but I had that book since, and I think he passed away. I think uh, it was like the year before this, um, before I bought the book. But it was one of the last runs that he did where he actually was able to sign for himself. After right. that, his wife was signing for him. Right. Right. But that's the story to buy. So my wife, every now and then will ask me, hey, go tell people, show them the box that you bought. <laughs> that was a big joke for her. Yeah. yeah show them the go show them the box that you spent one hundred ten dollars for. <laughs> so Buddy finally told her that it was worth a lot more than that because of that signature. Then she stopped, you know, kidding me. about it. That, she, that she left you alone after that. Right. <laughs> oh, look, I've got a box. You want to pay me a hundred bucks for it? You know, it was one <laughs> 
I got to tell you, I, 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 I really, I wish we had met longer ago. I wish I had gotten a chance to meet Marilyn because, you know, especially after, um, you know, she had just passed and you spoke at the service and you, you know, you gave everybody the link to, to allow us to watch the service, you know, online. And then when I watched it live, I mean, first of all, as I told you at the time, what a beautiful, beautiful service and, and, and your eulogy was phenomenal. But I love the fact, especially that what I really, the sense that I really got out of it was that you, not just you, I mean, you already knew you were hilarious, but I got the sense from the stories you told about her that she seemed to me, she seemed like she was also a pretty funny woman. Oh yeah, she was. We, <laughs> we laughed all the time. In matter yeah. of fact, 10 minutes before she had collapsed, we were just laughing about something stupid that I had said. Wow. We were laughing. So we had a full life of fun and laughs, and I don't regret any minute of it. So wow. it was great. So, you know, I'm moving forward, and life is good. I'm in a good place, and I have all of those memories to look back on because they'll sure. never go away. I'm really but happy. I appreciate everybody's concern and, and people's good wishes and kind words over the last year or so. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, it, it, you you deserve it, you know. Um, I'm I'm just glad to, to to know that you are doing doing well, you know. Um, I think a lot of us were kind of concerned, and as we spoke about privately before we went live, it's 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 tough sometimes, you know. You 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 want to you empathize with people, and then you 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 you, you know you sympathize, and you you want to know, you know, are you are you all right? And you might reach out, and they. They either don't get back to you, you know, because they're they're going through stuff, or they get back to you and they tell you real quick, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. But you don't really know. That's not enough. You know what I mean? You don't really know. But at the same time, you want them to grieve on their own in their own way. And you can't just keep sort of reaching out and, and you know, you feel like you're bothering them. And But at the same time, I know how it is when people pass. And a lot of people who pass, a lot of their friends don't bother because they, they feel awkward. So... They don't know what to say or, or or how to reach out, and so they don't bother because they feel, oh, he pro that person probably wants to be left alone to grieve. But the person is going through stuff, and oftentimes they wish that the people they love and care about the most would reach out and come come by and come and check on me, you know. But it's 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 yeah, it's strange sometimes. It's you know? I think the hardest thing for me was um, people really loved Marilyn. I mean, her coworkers, the relatives, her friends. I mean, everybody came and because they were just stunned by what happened. And I found that when people would come over, you know, they're coming to support you, they're coming to console you. But people would come to the house and they would just fall to pieces. I spent my time consoling other people, like, okay, it'll be all right. I mean, we're just, and how awkward is that? I'm just, right. okay, it's, it's, it's gonna be all right. And, you know, <laughs> you know it's you, cool. You Right. You gotta control them, like right, and that, yeah. that's what you know. Her hometown here, it was a lot of that, and it became very hard after a while because you you don't want to sound like you're not genuine, but then you don't really. Yeah. I didn't know what to say to them. Number right. not to say to me. I didn't know right. what to say to them. Yeah, you know, I, I I've been there. I've been there from on both sides of it, so I I I, I totally get it. You know. So that's why, yeah, that's why it, 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 it's a... Uh... But if Marilyn were here today, she would be yelling from the back room, you're not talking to that Nick guy, are you? <laughs> I know she would. That's what's so awesome about it. I love that. I love that. Um, just a couple of, a couple of um, um, comments, and then we'll get into the art, everybody. Um, so the first one, I just wanted to show you, Ron, that CJ says that it, he, he, he watched the service, so he said it was a beautiful and touching service. And um, Rich, whose birthday it is today, the birthday boy himself says, God bless you, Ron, coming from someone who has gone through a lot of loss in recent years, especially in the last year. So thank you. So excellent. All right. So, Ron, you ready to get into this? Yeah. Now, listen, you know, you're going to be asking me a lot of questions about art. And I don't know if I am. I just want you to kind of say whatever you want to say about what I show. I just want to point out this fact that, you know, at my age, I'm suffering from uh, CRS. I can't remember shit. So <laughs> I just want you to know that coming right out the gate that it's I made cool. art and go, yeah. damn, I know it's mine, but I don't know who the hell did that. But yeah, you know, yeah. let's go from that point. 
Well, well, when you look, when you see the slides, my slides are always, I do them the same way. At the top, you're going to get the title. Then a little bit below that, you'll get the artist. And a little bit below that, you'll get the year it was done. Some Good. of the years, just so you know, some of the years, they may be wrong. I just went by, like, if, if the piece wasn't dated, I just went by the year that you posted it. So that's, that's well, that, hey, that's the best that you can do because I don't know. I okay. mean, I'm, you know, I know, you know, we'll see what I know. <laughs> if I don't know, I'm just going to lie anyway. So I just, yeah, want yeah. To so, like I said, the, the main info is already on the slide. So I just basically want what we always do here is we just I just we we like to have the collector sort of say a little bit about oh, what they remember about getting it or what they like about it. Well, that's all. You don't have to Most of what I it. remember is my wife yelling at me about how much I pay. That's all. <laughs> yeah. of what I remember. I'm sure that that you could say that about every piece, you know. <laughs> now look at Nick. Now I have Pam wondering when I'm joining her for dinner. Well. well they <laughs> Oh, another one of your friends just came in, I believe. Alan oh, Pickler. Um, he's a good friend of mine back in the military days. Oh. His wife, his daughter is my goddaughter. Oh, so I'm good to hear from you, Alan. And I know they were really close to Marilyn. Okay, great. Thank you for dropping in, Alan, and supporting. Thank you so much. Um, are you watching Ruben the Collector again during... <laughs> She shouldn't be asking you that because, you know, when you come in, it's not like you stick around for the whole show. You, you know, you stick around 20, 30 minutes, whatever. So she shouldn't be angry at me about that or at you about that, you know. That's funny, though. Uh, Nick, easy to get sidetracked tonight. I told her Ron is on the air, so she gave me the okay to stay longer. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hearing about his fair play, Nick. Exactly, Marcus. All right, everybody, let's get into it. Um, thank you, by the way, to all of you. Those of you not only watching here live, um, those of you who watch on Rewind only, um, of course, you guys can fast forward to get whatever parts you want to get to. Um, but for those of you who are alive, of course, and who kind of wait patiently and all you really care about is the art and you don't like the banter back and forth, um, I don't apologize because the banter is my favorite part of it all. Um, but I thank you for being patient and allowing me to do this um, during every show and yeah this is this is my favorite part of it all it's the, the getting to know people so with that being said everybody let us get into the first piece of tonight's show and tell with ron shepherd and for that i figured the best way to start is since it's the only piece uh from tonight's show that will be a published piece and it's got a connection to Nick, which is where kind of everybody who knows Ron in any way, um, those of us in the hobby who know him, you know, most everybody knows him from Nick's show. Um, I figured this was the good piece to start off with. So we'll do this. Um, and just FYI, everyone, you guys know that on my show and tells, even when I have, let's say, three pieces out of 20, they may be by the same artist. You know, I like to spread them out throughout the evening. Tonight, I decided to try something different. Um, the reason being, because a lot of the artists that Ron has commissioned um, over the years are not comic book, monthly comic book drawing type artists. So you may not be familiar with a lot of the names. So I figured tonight might be a good reason for um, putting those examples together. So in other words, um, there's, there's a few artists here tonight where I'm actually showing anywhere from three to six examples of their work. So I decided just in order for you guys to get a better visual of what, you know, to associate that name with the style in case you like it and want to try to reach out to that artist. Um, what I've done is, for example, if, if, if it's, you know, Joe Stevens, um, if, I, if I picked three pieces of his work um, out of the 40 slides, Tonight, you will see them in a row. So if I get to the first Joe Stevens piece, it'll be that one. And then the next piece will be the other one by him. And then the third piece will be by him as well. So I've done it that way for any artist who I'm showing multiple pieces of. So just so you know um, in advance. Um, and I think that's um, about all I got to say to you all. But uh, yes, uh, Marcus, uh, uh, it's not all Hazer. Yeah. But it will, it, <laughs> uh, 
Rick says, set hazers on stun. Good one. <laughs> like that. Um, but we are starting with hazer, of course. <laughs> um, we got to do it that way. And like I said, it is the one and only published piece for the evening. Um, so, yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one, Ron? Oh, um, one of the few comic books where I can at least that I've read at least one comic book. But I remember seeing this show on TV. Okay. When Nick, uh, Dynamic Forces, um, they started producing the comic book and I saw this piece of art come up. I had to, to claim it and um, put it in my collection because it brought back memories of me as a kid watching the um, parts of the animated shows. So Ken Hazer is a popular artist with me. I've owned a lot of his sketch covers over the years. Yeah. And uh, when I saw this piece, I, I had to have it. And Nick was gracious enough to, to uh, sell it to me. Excellent. That's beautiful. And and I'm assuming it appears, because typically typically the colors are not done on the original art. That looks like the well, colors this, are done on the original this, art. This was, again, me not knowing, because I don't really purple I didn't know that. So I just had Ken color it. Now there's a new one that he's doing for me. I had him make a copy and then color oh. it. It didn't matter to me. I wanted okay. it to look as close to what he did in the actual printed color. Yeah. He was grateful enough to nobody said don't do that. And of course I right. didn't know. I said do that. Right. Marcus already knows that you got Hazer to color it after the fact. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Corey says that's pretty damn nice. Uh hey, get text. What's up? Goo goo gargoyles. <laughs> Don't know what you mean by that. Uh Dan Evans says, very nice, fun show. Thank you, sir. And Nick says, that's one of my favorite parts of the show when the community gets so happy and it touches a great memory yeah there you go but uh, okay excellent so um from there we go to the second piece i got three pieces i believe by ken hazer tonight and the second one is this one i thought i love this one i love when artists have to think in reverse and think in terms of negative space and draw that way he's check really good at that yeah check this out everybody so yeah this is a blank cover which is black so he has to think in reverse to draw the white stuff you know? Uh, yeah, so this is really cool. I like this piece. Yeah, he's a master with the negative space and the silver ink. Yeah, and is that silver ink? I, I thought, because it looked like white on, on the scan. No, no, it, it's actually silver ink. Silver, okay. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. And now, is this, is this, would this be one where, like, you commissioned, or is it one of the ones that you claim? No, the, this, you know? this would probably, I, all of them came through Nick, but, okay. And I was allowed to actually commission um, Ken through Nick, and I have several of those pieces too, because there's a, a couple of wraparound covers, and they, I don't know which ones you pick, but there's some wraparound dual, like he did the uh, Metal Men for me and things like that. But this one happened to be one that I claimed on the show. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a cool one. Yeah, so it's a, a cool one to claim. Back in the day, I remember the days where Every week, it'd just be you, Ron. Just this, anything you put up that was a sketch cover. Oh, Ron's buying it. Ron's buying it. <laughs> you know, I, I've tried to back off in a number of the shows because newer people have joined the show. And I tried to give everybody a chance to to get in there and, and grow their collection. And if something's left over that I like, then I will claim it after. But I give people the shot first without just jumping on it. That's cool of you. You know what I mean? Although, I, I just so you know, just from one collector's perspective, I personally, oh, as cool as that is of you, um, and I and I understand where you're coming from as well. Um, I hope that you don't feel that you do it because of a, out of a feeling of a sense of like guilt and obligation. Because no, 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 that's not the way to do it. Because I know with the people that come on the show, like Lars Mann and Creative Keep and CJ and and John Spilios. I mean, a lot of these guys. I know which things they collect and I will ask, right. them, you know, hey, yeah, are you going to go for this? We're, we're not going to get into a bidding war. We're not going to do that. If this is something you want for your collection, there'll be others. If I don't get this piece, I'll get two others. So I'm not concerned about that. But right. we kind of stick together on that and it's worked out for us so far. OK, well said. Perfect. All right. So with that, everybody, let's check out the uh, third and final Ken Hazer piece for the evening. And that is. I don't know what you call these. Ron, you'll have to let me know, or Nick, if, if Ron doesn't know, if these, if we if we have a name for this style of of Ken Hazer commission. So check this out, everybody. And I just before 
before Ron even starts telling us what he wants to about this, these these are two pieces, two two uh, two separate com two separate. I didn't know how to say it. Let's just say this: it's two, yeah, two separate they're two, pieces. They're two connecting, they're two connecting covers. No, no, no. It's two separate pieces, okay, right. so side by side. Say, um, it's just that it's it's the two where he does them on four different sketch covers. Oh yeah, now yeah, those are oh. that I've got. We got we got to come up with a name for those yeah. things. There, you know? it's we just call them four connecting covers because it's four, four individual. Four individual sketch cover books that are joined together. I oh. have, I think, four or five of them, and a few of them are actually framed. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. So let's check this out, and then you can tell us a little bit about it, and then tell us how you got or how the framer got to keep them. To, you know how they they sort of stay together. I'm, I'm I'm curious about that. But check this one out, everybody. So here you go. There's one piece on the left, one on the right. These are beautiful, both on their own. Yeah. Uh, one of them, of course, is the um, um, redo of the Death of Captain Marvel cover, originally by Jim Starlin. And the one on the right, of course, is the recreation of the Punisher number three cover, uh, originally done by Mike Zeck. Um, and as, as those of you who don't attend Nick's shows can see, the reason you're seeing those Avengers logos everywhere is because it's four different comic books that he puts together like that and does one whole giant piece four times as large um and they don't he doesn't affix them together or anything they come loose um but as ron said he later got um some uh, framed which is uh what i'm curious to see how your framer keeps them together so go ahead ron and tell us what you so, want to know um, with these again i don't read the comic books but i understood from the show when these were presented that these homages um were a famous covers and everybody was all excited about the fact that they were excited so i said well if they're excited about it it must be worth buying i mean i like the visual i like the colors when it came to the punisher i'm a very good friend of mike zack and okay. um, i don't know i don't know the punisher stories per se but i always loved his art and i have several commissions by him but when i saw this it reminded me of the first commission that i ever bought from mike and um, so when Nick presented these and I got it, so my mind was like, well, how am I going to get these framed? Because if you put them together and put them loosely in the frame, they'll start to slide. Okay. So yeah. what I did was I took them, I left them in the plastic bags, but took the backer board out. And then what it is, is those things are attached to a black background. Okay. And then right. they're together with what little individual corners and they're kind of glued because you're not gluing the comic book you're only gluing the plastic bag that they're in oh and then once you get that you pick out your frame of course and get it around but they're also under museum grade glass for uv um, protection but oh. yeah so there is a little bit of a gap that you don't see here on the frame but it's it's negligible it's not bad at all and i've right. been able to get i think out of the five i think i think i've had three framed oh three of them wow i have okay. three that are framed and that, does, I, that, does that include these two run though uh no well these two and i think i have two she hulk ones that oh. are and then there's another one i have but this i think it's only these two no excuse me this the uh, captain marvel one and then the two she hulks are framed oh okay nice wow no, they, they must look really really great framed that and and just in case anybody wants to know i had them done at a place called michael's in the united states oh yeah but if and because i've had them done through michael's if anybody has to get one of these framed like this all i have to do is give them my cell phone number and they can look up how it was framed at through any michael's it, it'll show exactly how it was and they could just duplicate what i did it's already in their system. Oh, okay, nice. Wow. Well, yeah, that's 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 yeah, pretty sweet. I I I, I it, it's too bad that uh, I I'm assuming you don't have one anywhere nearby that we could. Well, let me, let me see. Hold on, let me keep that up. Let me see if I can grab one. Okay, sure. And the She-Hulks are Burn and Bisema. Oh yeah, those are awesome ones. And only Hazer. Well, yeah, only Hazer does them. Yeah, for sure. 
so yeah these are these are always fun and it's true um about how uh, has he not been doing them for a while now nick because i know i haven't and it feels like it's been a while since i i saw you um offer any of those so um i'm just wondering if, if he's kind of like if he doesn't want to do them or is he too busy and if if, if it's that he just doesn't want to do them um do you know why and you know just curious because I, I would think it's a, a bit of a pain in the ass honestly because of the fact that he doesn't attach them first or maybe maybe who knows maybe he does maybe he can quickly with a little bit of scotch tape just to keep them together um he might be able to but it would seem to me that it might be a bit of a pain in the ass to kind of work with because it's also big you know so um nick says okay time to go to dinner all right sounds good nick have a good dinner um oh look at that everybody check it out wow okay that is so cool wow that's <laughs> that really okay that is really really cool that is so i'm telling you ron that is so 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 much cooler than just having seen them on nick's show you know all the time oh wow wow sick <laughs> that's awesome that is real oh my gosh wow so much better that way uh, it almost feels to me now ron like you can't own those quads i'll call them quads because all those other names nick names that nick was telling me they're, they're way too long too many words i'll call them the quad commissions yeah it, it it just seems now like i could never i can't imagine ever owning one unless the idea was absolutely to get it framed because if you if you don't get it framed what's the point really right because you can't put them in a portfolio or anything unless you just stack them or you know what i mean it's too they thick. slide and yeah. it's hard to keep them together exactly yeah. it's it's pointless afterwards you know so it's like yeah gosh i i wonder how everybody else who ever claimed any of them in the past i wonder if they got them framed as well or if they just kind of keep them stacked in a box or something you know um nick oh nick you didn't leave yet and you're telling me he's been doing more published cover work lately well there you go that's more important which makes him more money of course it does yeah the good for him congrats to ken you know that's awesome and uh, tom says mine are on the one more day four issues from amazing spider-man cool cool but do you have them framed the way that ron did though or do you just have them in a box or how do you keep them uh, tom and um carlito yellow on red motif hope that means you like it um let's see they are not that hard what what do you mean they're not that oh you mean to draw to draw yeah but but cj i'm not talking about drawing on a blank individually i'm talking about doing what ken does with the four one image on four of them together kind of thing it would seem to me that if, especially if you're using like a drafting table or something you kind of would have to put a little bit of scotch tape somehow on the back or whatever just to keep them from moving like otherwise i don't know it just seems like a, a pain in the ass to, to have to work on four covers that way you know but anybody um, anybody that has them that they got them through nick or whatever if they reach out me to me through you i'll connect them with how i got them framed and they'll be able to do the same thing there you go so reach out everybody if you want to know yeah that'd be awesome uh, black viper of Dorn says you're giving me ideas well that's good because that's an awesome idea um i just heard angelo i don't even know what that means corey sorry um you use thumbtacks and just pick <laughs> um, Hicks, i'm sure i'm sure you do we all believe you you know uh no you've got them all bagged up yeah, that's what i kind of thought tom um it's not okay cj i'll take your word for it it's not hard to draw on four loose comic books one image that spreads out on all four i'll take your word for it man but you keep saying it's not hard but at least tell us if you've done it tell us how you do it i'm just curious how the artist does it you know in other words are you are you you know taping them or something together so you sketch out or you know how like how do you do it since they come separate that's all i'm asking that's what i want to know i'm curious um cj quads incoming <laughs> we're being framed uh oh i like venom spidey ghost rider okay uh oh, that's for nick 
the comics den you yelled out sick yes Corey. that's the whole joke it's the comics den thing we're doing all the time uh <laughs> angelo is the that sick guy oh oh that's it. right thank you right i forgot i forgot that that was his name oh my gosh that's so funny uh yes that's what we're all doing all the time that's why when you see that happen in my chats or in um nick's chats you see people saying sick and no way you know yeah, we're doing angelo um so some artists are going to get some crazy four blank cover requests and that is some super effort by the artist yep we are gonna need they don't have to do it though a quad of johnny quest blanks and the white template paper and okay excellent so let us move on everybody we got a lot of art to go through um this next piece is so so this next piece just so you know ron you had it listed as hip-hop groot yes but I, having been very much into old school hip hop from the 80s when I was a kid or teenager in the 80s myself, I looked at it and I, I was immediately, well, it's not just hip hop Groot. Isn't it more specifically LL Groot J? Yes. <laughs> I went by the title that the artist did. He called it. Oh. That. Continued on with it. But yes, this is actually in one of my sketchbooks, one of my uh, 10 by 14 yeah. sketchbooks. Right. The artist is Crick, uh, Chris Flick, and I've known him for a long time. He's a talented guy, and he's yeah. very funny. He yeah. writes. A, he has a, a book um, that's. Uh, um, I guess he's self-published uh, the book, but it's all about a comic book store and about all of the weird people that come in there. They're like vampires and werewolves and all of that. So it, it's a it's a pretty fun. He's a very talented guy. Cool. Is, it, is he somebody who lives uh, in the Maryland area and he shows he up? Lives, he, he lives in Virginia. And okay. always, I, we have two big shows here, the DC Awesome Con, and we have the Baltimore show. He's always at those two shows. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what I figured. You, you know him from the local shows. Yeah. Yeah. Ruben said, knock you out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, Rickster, just, just last night, I would listen to another classic. I was on YouTube and I, I ended up listening to, um, bad. Everybody, every, uh, everybody remember, cause you think bad, you think, oh, Michael Jackson's bad, but LL Cool J has a really oh, yeah. classic oh, song called bad. Mm -hmm. And you know, mama, you know, mama said, knock you out. It became so that was weird. Later everybody sort of thinks of that one first but bad was awesome so check it out if you don't remember it um so yeah cool piece excellent um let's go to another new artist and a lot of these artists will be unfamiliar to a lot of you i'm sure and this one is dream or death and dream of the endless by chris mad who i personally have never heard of but uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about it. it's a really nice looking piece I have a number of uh, commissions from Chris. He is a, he's out of New Jersey. Okay. He is a fantastic artist. I have, I don't know, probably about eight or nine commissions from him, whether it be in my sketchbook or um, or loose art or sketch covers or whatever he's done. He just finished. A, this was the latest piece he did for me, but he also did a piece for me from the movie, uh, the first animated heavy metal movie. Oh, and he he recreated the scene where um, uh, Captain Stern is being chased by Hanover Fist through the ship, and he's tearing the bulkheads apart to get him. Oh. So he did that piece for me, uh, and and some others. He also did um, what was the two guys, uh, uh, John Candy and Rick Flaherty, who just passed away. They did the voices of uh, Zeke and Edsel. Two guys working on the ship, and they're snorting this big line of heavy-duty cocaine throughout the ship. Yeah. So yeah, but um, Chris is a, a fantastic artist, and anybody that wants to know who some of these guys are and get in connect with them, I'll be happy to do that. But Chris is a tremendous artist; you can't go wrong with a commission from him. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, don't forget, guys. Um, also, FYI, I, I, I sometimes forget to to let you guys all know um after the show if you guys want to check out i mean this is just even even at 40 slides right twice as many as i have ever you know i usually do on, on a show and tell this is still literally a infinitesimally small portion of ron's collection so later after the show if you want to see what else he's got go down in the description below his his link to his cap galleries uh included down below here 
go directly there and check out what else he's got. Man, you'll get lost for hours. So, um, and yeah, as as Ron says, um, go through his calf and reach out to him and and anybody you want to uh, uh, sort of get in touch with, and he'll he'll gladly help you out. So, that's nice. Yeah, collectors helping collectors. I love that. You know. So, um, okay, excellent. So, um, oh, and by the way, um, a lot of these commissions that you see. These are favorite characters of the artist. So I try to find out what they're interested oh. in in that way. So they really want to put their best foot forward yeah. because they're really interested in. So there's yeah, you want you want them to be in, into what they're the commission as much as possible, right? So that's a good way of doing it. Um Peter Peter wants to ask you, um, Ron, how do you get your sketchbook to and from artists? I don't want to put mine in the mail. No, well, I don't use the regular mail, I use FedEx. And I will, when I pack it up, I use a laptop box because the, the book is 10 by 14. Right. So I get a laptop box, it's fully padded, protected. And there's two and a half gallon uh, Ziploc bags. So the book fits in that nicely. It's zipped, it's padded, it's keep from water damage. I send it out FedEx, the artist has to sign for it. And I include a return label. Oh, cool. Oh, you mean a, re a return label? Does that mean um, it has already been prepaid by you? Yeah. Yes. Oh. And pre there's nothing coming out of pocket for them. Right. Sure. And, and that and that way, it's uh, they don't even have to pay first and hope you pay them back. Like it's it's taken no. care of. So all oh. you have to worry about is, please just take the time to take it to FedEx or at least call them and have them pick it up from you. Well, kind of what I also tell them is, you I want the book packaged back to me the way you received it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Marcus is saying, how do you even get all of these? Are are these all in one collection? What do you mean? No. Um, what you see right now, some of the, well, I don't know where Ruben drew the pictures from, but I have four or six, well, four completed 10 by 14 sketchbooks that are leather bound. That's one. And then the, the last two, the last, the current two and the, and the fourth one, I put watercolor paper in the books because I had a lot of artists approach me and said, hey, you know, I want to put something in your book, but my primary medium is either, you know, acrylic or it's watercolor. Can you do something about that? I just don't have as many pages, but they, the books end up being the same size. Okay. But yeah, but that's how I ended up doing it. Cool. Thank you. And Carlos, just asking, any shipping scares in the past? I only had one okay. and it was with an artist. Uh, it was the next to the last in the first book and he promised to get it back to me in two weeks like three months later i was still trying to get my book yeah and i ended up going to the police and it was a whole oh. thing and then wow. when they said, well this, his wife said well i don't know what the big fuss is his book is sitting right here the drawing's been done for months yeah. he just refused to send my book back for some Too reason lazy. right and at the oh. time I worked for homeland security but i was just short of getting a plane ticket to go get my book myself. My wife was very concerned. She said, well, you know, you're gonna get into trouble. I said, look, this guy's 78 years old. Anytime I can't take a 78 year old, I might as well just give up everything. <laughs> but the day that I was booking the tickets, I got a call from Michael Dooney, the artist out of uh, Boston. And Michael said, you know, you never guess what I got in the mail. They didn't even send it FedEx. They just wrapped it up and sent it regular mail to M Michael Dooney. But it oh. worked out. Did the light the last drawing in the book, but that's the only scare I ever had in all of these years. And I started these drawings in 2010. Wow! Right, and that's the that's only. Good. That's a good record, man. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 you know, furthermore to to the um, the little story where you said you know you're this close to getting on a plane. I once and I told the story before. I I once got ripped off by a guy on eBay, and he lived in some county somewhere in san diego and um I, I i was so angry about the whole thing i actually was going to it was about a month away from san diego comic-con and i was like okay i'll just wait the extra month because i was going to go to san diego comic-con anyways and then i'm going to go there i'll be there a day or two early before the show, and I'm gonna go pay this guy a visit. I'm just gonna show up at his door, you know. So he gives me what he owes me, you know. And I happened to, to tell a friend of mine at the time that what I was gonna do, what my plan was, and he reminded me. He's like, you know, 
I would suggest very strongly you don't do that because you don't know that you walk up to this guy's house and once you tell him who you are and what you're there for, that he doesn't go inside and tell, okay, hold on, I'll be right back with it. And then he comes out with a gun and blows you away. Like, you don't know who you're dealing with. You know what I mean? And so I said, okay, I was as angry as that made me. I was like, okay, you're right now. Um, and that's it, right? You, you, you know, whatever. Sometimes you just. Now, there's a, there's a bunch of people on here that have been my friends for a long time, and they know me. So let's just say I would not have been concerned about that. Right. <laughs> that's funny. Ruben Den Forrester, well, not quite. Uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny. Um, you, you, Carlos, you say the, the, you call me the, the enforcer. So after I decided not to go, for those of you who don't remember the story, I instead decided to do the right thing. And I went through the court system. I got a court date to sue the guy in San Diego. Um, and so I was going to go through that. But then the same the same friend who warned me about, you know, might not be a good idea to go pay him a visit in person. He reminded me. Like, go and do it if you want. Go to show up in court in San Diego. But like, he goes, you have to understand. Don't forget, he probably won't show up. He doesn't care. He won't show up. You will get the judgment. The problem is then who cares if you get the judgment? The, 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 the law won't then pay somebody to go and chase after this guy to force him to pay you whatever he owes you. So you're still not going to get what you bought from him or what you paid him for or your money back. So you're just going to get a, you know, it's a win, but it's like a moral victory kind of thing. And so in the end, I was like, oh, okay. And I just canceled my, my, my court date, you know, and in the end, I just accepted I got ripped off. And that was that. So for better or worse, whatever. Right? It's a long time ago. So it's it's over now. And, you know, it is what it is. Kappa Kappa Canadian. Was his name Jones? It was not. Uh, no enforcement, no. Anyways, let's get in uh, back into the uh, <clears throat> show and tell everybody. And um, so this next piece, uh, two pieces, actually. So it's two pieces by one artist. So I put them both just so I can show more pieces um, onto one slide. And let's check this out. Uh, you guys, most of you should know who this artist is. Here we go. So it's Game of Death with Bruce Lee and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on one commission and then um, Man-Thing on the other, uh, both separated by like almost a decade by um, well-known former inker and artist Chris Ivey, Christopher Ivey, known to many of you that way. Yeah. When I met Chris, he did a Thanos piece for me and then we, because he started talking to me about his love of martial arts. And we were talking one day and we were talking about the fight that everybody wanted. But, um, you know, this was Bruce Lee. He died before this movie came out. But right. his sequence with his very good friend and student, Kareem Abdul Dabar, had been uh, actually completed. So I asked him about doing this particular piece and how would he turn it to where you could see all of the action to the front? Because normally Bruce Lee would be kicking from the other side and you just see his back. So Chris yeah. said he thought about it. And he said he figured out a way to do it. I think to date on my calf page, this piece is probably the most that's ever been viewed. And I think it's over 12,000 views. Wow. That and is then crazy. years later, ran into Chris and he's out of New Jersey and uh, he was looking to make some money. You know, he had some things and we started, I reached out to a bunch of people to get commissions from him. And I asked him to do a man thing for me since my book was already in New Jersey with Chris Mad. Oh, okay. So they don't live too far from each other. Oh, that's so I cool. To get two commissions knocked out in, in the same time frame, but Chris did a fantastic job with this uh, man thing. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. And this was this was right after the uh, Werewolf by Night um, Disney Plus thing had come on TV. Oh, okay. You know man thing was part of that that's what gave me the idea oh interesting okay because i never watched it so and, now and then you're missing out it was really? black, it was a fantastic show and they really? only did one, the one thing but they put a lot of effort into it and it was great what wow i i i gotta tell you you, know, you can you can ask your audience how many people didn't like that thing it was yeah. probably 
get that answer versus yeah but why don't all of you guys let me know anybody who watched it let me let us know what, what you guys thought of it because i i remember just kind of quickly checking online to see if there was any feedback you know real quick i don't remember it being sort of like i don't remember necessarily that it was bad but i also don't remember it being like people saying oh my god that was great you know it, it was it was very good it was wow. very good and like i said one of the few comic books that i had ever read was werewolf by night so and i was very interested right. but i thought it was well put together and it kind of had that old dracula frankenstein castle uh old horror movie kind of feel because it was done in black and white oh wow okay so and they pulled a um, Wizard of Oz thing because so it was in black and white until you got to the very end and all of a sudden it was in oh, color. Color? Right. Wow. And how long was that? Like how many I episodes? think they, I, I want to say it was. Six or eight or something? No, no. It was, it was only a few. I don't oh. remember any, but it was very short, but it was well worth, it was well worth seeing. Okay, cool. Rick, Rick uh, agrees with you. Nick says it's the best Marvel show movie since WandaVision. Um, Mike at NSN Art says, agreed, worth the watch. Wow. Um, Nick doesn't want us to tell that he snuck back in because <laughs> Pam's going to beat up on him. <laughs> uh, oh, Dwayne says it was a great show and not long left you wanting more. Long after, right. Wow, really? They left, they left it open to where it could be more to it, but they just ended it. But it was ended in a good spot. And so sorry, what, what's the official title of this show? It's Werewolf by Night. Just Werewolf by Night, okay. Werewolf by Night. Okay. What's Jeff saying that the D plus, plus special was superb? What was he what was he talking about? Uh the D plus special, it was superb. I guess maybe that was his grade for it. I don't know. Oh. But I I wouldn't give it that, but you know, everybody's gonna oh, okay. Oh, look at that. What's up, James? He even says also done well and got great reviews. Really? Gee, yeah. what is you okay. missed out. Look at that. Dan Evan. The Werewolf by Night series was excellent. Wow. And a single episode, not drawn out in six or eight. Right. They it, did. Was it, was longer. it was longer now that I remember. It was longer than the normal thing, but they did it all in one thing. And you kept wanting to say, damn, will they do it again next season? But they never did. Oh, so Jeff is saying they, maybe around 90 minutes. It's, right. so it's kind of like a little mini movie. If you, right. If you, it was it look at it like a movie. Instead of breaking it up into episodes, they gave it to you and it was done at like Halloween time. Okay. Okay. I'll have to I'll have to check that out then. Um Marcus, I never even saw the 90s X-Men cartoons. So th I don't know that this X-Men 97 thing would mean anything to me, you know? And I've been told already for years to watch the 90s stuff. So I probably have to watch that first before I get to this new one. Um, on Disney Plus. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll figure oh, that's what he was saying. Oh, Disney Plus. Disney. That's what I mean. Okay. Right. Thank you, James, for clarifying. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, never heard of it. <laughs> See? At least I heard of it. But, Corey, now you know. It's excellent, apparently. Check it out. But, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out, too. Yeah. And, and wow. That's one thing I, I, I don't remember hearing that. Um, that man thing was part of it. And you're saying he looked cool? It was a, it, you know, I say that now, but it was kind of like a surprise kind of thing. You don't know, but I won't tell you what happens. But okay, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that's you got it, but you, it's 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 well worth your, it's well worth the price of admission to, to see awesome. it. Awesome. That's, that's all I need. And plus, all these positive reviews from everybody else. I'm really, I have to. Okay. So I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. Um, let's move on with the show. Still got way too much art. Not enough time. So. Uh, from there, let us go to the next piece, which Mickey, Mickey and Amantha do is usually uh, listening silently. So, Mickey, if you're watching um, or listening silently, um, this one I picked for you. Well, for me too, but also for you. This is Mickey's, not only one of his favorite artists, but a good friend of his. And now I know, Ron, that it happens to be a friend of yours too. So let's check this one out, everyone. It is The Shadow by Barry Kitson from 2023, just last year. And I thought that yeah, was pretty, pretty I neat. I to keep in touch with him. I just bought a cover from a comic book where he did, uh, it was about Sherlock Holmes. So okay. he made the prelim, and then he did it in uh, ink, and then he did it again the last time in full cover. So I own the prelim, the inked piece, and the fully colored piece of a Sherlock Holmes um, cover that he did for a magazine in the uk okay 
Interesting. Yeah, it's cool. The, the thing about Barry's work that I, I, I have always found interesting is that he has had so many styles over the years. Um, and so I'm looking at this piece and like I, I want to say I'm familiar with his work, uh, with a lot of his work. And yet when I saw this piece, as I was going through your gallery, I was like, oh, man, like that's interesting. Again, another style that I haven't quite seen him do when he does published comics, you know. Um, so and then I'm a, I'm a fan of the shadow. So I thought, OK, I want to show a shadow piece um and that's why i picked it but yeah this is it's a lot of fun so um yeah i really think cool. i have a few shadow pieces in my you room. do you do and uh, that is not the last one we will be seeing tonight everyone so <laughs> just just the quick I, I, I know which one you're talking yeah, about. yeah you probably do you probably do i was hoping you probably would maybe hope that i would show it so yeah. i don't know i figured okay i'll show it we'll see at the end because it's it's towards the end so um Okay, and I just wanted to, to mention to you guys in the chat, um, where are you here? Ooh, ton of, oh yeah. So thank you for saying um, there's no need to watch the old ones. That's, I find that kind of hard to believe, but okay, I'll take your word for it, Marcus. And James says that the X-Men 7 is the best thing Marvel has made in the MCU era. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, that's crazy good praise. I mean, Shocking praise, to be honest. Wow. Um, I got props and crew items from Werewolf by Night. Wow. Well, of course you did, though. That's what you collect, Tom. So I'm not surprised. So that's cool. Uh, there's only one thing that I could nitpick, but overall, the movie was really good. Okay, another fan. They made a real man thing suit, but went CGI at the last minute. Interesting. Okay. And Ken Shepard, I'm his brother. Werewolf was yeah, that's, my, that's my brother from New Jersey. Wow. What's up, Ken? Hey, thanks for dropping in to see your bro. Wow, that's so cool. Um, Mickey, <laughs> Mickey Boo Boo. Um, look at that. Saying hello to your bro. You have the man thing suit? No, I'm sure he doesn't have the suit. The shadow does know, and you will know later on as well. Um, hi, Kim. Well, look at that. Everybody, that's what I love. See, this is what I mean, Ron. Everybody, look, so your brother pops in suddenly. Everybody just of their own volition, welcoming your brother. I love that. That's a camaraderie. That's what it should be all be about, you know. That's what I love about and people with like like-minded people. Just sort of, you know, it's all about people. That's what it is for me, you know, more so than the art. Like I said, um, yeah, classy shadow. Thank you, Rick. Bought the shadow graphic novel from Kaluta at a con in '88. That's cool. Um, knowing is half the battle. That would be GI Joe. Forgetting is the other half. Nice one, Rick. And nice. Okay, excellent. All right. No time to waste. Let's get to the next one. Love this next one, everybody. Um, the name's familiar. So, Ron, you can tell me if you know anything about him. I don't know if he's like a, a if he draws actual comics or not, but it, it rang familiar to me. I love this character. I love the visuals of this character. Um, and his style is really nice. And the colors I thought were, were excellent. So check this one out, everybody. Now, David Newbow, I don't know if he's done anything for Marvel. I think he did a DC cover, but he's a local artist. Okay. And um, he actually had done this piece like smaller and a little less colorful. And when I saw it, I asked him to recreate it. He just did it for himself. I did buy the original that he had, but I wanted him to make some slight improvements and put it in one of my sketchbooks. And oh. this he was able to do and i was unfamiliar with the character like most but i love the visual and how it looked because when i first ran home i thought it was the vision but then they, he explained to me about mr miracle and then it turns out that tom king was had done the writing for the um the graphic novel and um yeah for mr. miracle well i met tom king at uh because he used to work for the cia oh and yeah, that's right him a lot of years ago, he was at the first DC Awesome Con, and he had written a novel called Crowded Skies. Okay. And he was sitting at a table by himself. Nobody really knew. He was, it was stacked with all of these hardback books. And he was hawking his books, trying to get people to buy. Well, I bought like four of those books and had them signed. And I went and I told everybody about him and about his books. The next day I came back, he had one book left. And he was using that just to show people, but he had sold out. We got the word around and his books were sold out. We wow. kept in touch all of the years. And then next thing you know, he's doing Batman or something from DC. And now he's, you know, an awesome writer and famous guy now. But in those days, he called me the, not 
apart from your name, Ruben, but I used to carry, well, I still do these two big bags on wheels with my stuff in them to the convention. And he always calls me the collector. <laughs> and um, uh, when I come to see him, and you know, he has a long line of people. Well, if I'm standing near the line, he'll stop the line and just start talking to me. I can't tell you how many death stares I get from people who've been standing in line forever waiting on him. And all yeah. of a sudden he stops everything to talk to me. <laughs> but he's a wonderful guy. And um, and David did a great job with this artwork. You know, it's fantastic. I really loved it. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, I, I didn't even think twice. Okay, this one's in the show for sure, you know. Um, real quick, uh, Peter, sorry, um, I saw your question earlier. I didn't forget it. I was just going to wait for the perfect kind of moment to get to it. But um, since you asked again, um, let me put it out there for Ron. What are the themes of your sketchbooks, if there I, are any themes? You know? um, well, I say no, but that, that's not exactly true. I have a small sketchbook, leather bound with a pewter in, uh, uh, emblem in the middle of it from Harry Potter. It's the Hogwarts seal. I mm -hmm. bought it at their, their place in uh, Universal. So what I decided to do with that was, instead of having a theme of, well, you know, I'm just gonna do Harry Potter. Well, what I did was I went to different artists and I asked them to just do something Harry Potter related. So I figured no matter what your style, no matter what you draw, there was something, whether it be creature, whether the guy that did the first build, the first drawing, he didn't like to draw people. So I had him drew, uh, he drew a pen and ink Hogwarts castle, including with the moat and everything. So I have found that if you go to artists, they have themes, but the artists, if you want a certain artist to do, let's say your Iron Man theme, well, if they really don't draw Iron Man all the time, they're gonna do, they're gonna do a nice drawing, but it's not gonna be their best work because that's not something they're excited about. So I try not to do themes, but that's just me. Yeah, there you go, Peter. I hope that's uh... a... <laughs> A satisfactory answer to to a, to a good question. So thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. Um, okay, let us go to the next piece. And for this one, very interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what you have to say about this. Um, so this one is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon by Dashong Guo. I didn't know that he was really famous and he was at a Baltimore show. Now he's really up there, okay. but I happened to see him and he speaks, he, at the time he spoke very little English. Right. And everybody translating for him. And I saw the stuff that he was drawing and through interpreter, I said, I asked him about Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and I wanted to do something with the, the green sword. And could you do something for me in my sketchbook? So we, you know, talk through other people, but we got it done, and this is what he created for that. Oh, he did a fantastic job. That's beautiful. So sorry. Um, uh, uh, th sorry. Are you saying through the through the mail or at the con? No, no, no. This was he did this at the con. At the con, yeah. Okay. The con, but not through the mail. Yeah, that's oh, fantastic. It, it's kind of even more impressive that to be able to get uh, something of this quality at a con. You know, I, I yep. think it's spectacular. Yeah, he's been doing nice work, says Carlos. Yeah, so Carlos is familiar with his work. Yeah, that's uh, beautiful. That's really, really awesome. Excellent. Um, another um, artist that I have not... Oh, sorry. CJ says, light and powerful, Ron. And okay. Rick says, love the dragon. Yeah, I think the whole thing is just beautiful, and it works together as a nice composition, you know? Um, oh, Dan says, gorgeous. Really cool use of... Brushwork, I would think it looks to me like it's brushwork. I mean, yeah, yeah. the Chinese artists that do that type of style, it's typically brushes, you know? So, yeah, excellent. Okay, so um, the next piece is um, by an artist also that um, maybe you can tell us all about because somebody else who I have not heard of before, but the character everybody knows. So let's check this one out. I met Eric Grove. He was introduced to me at OAX. Okay. He was sitting next to another artist that I have. He's done actual acrylic oil paintings in my sketchbooks, and that's Miles Wall. And oh, Miles yeah. and him, and they were sitting next to each other, so I showed him my sketchbooks. And he had a smaller Judge Dredd piece that he had done. But I explained up my, my sketchbook, and I wanted to know if he was going to be able to do something at the show. So this is actually painted this piece oh it and looks yeah it's clear it, 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 and it looks 
I, that's why I wanted to include it because not only is it uh, a painting and a sketchbook, but I thought, wow, it looks like he might even have used oils. It's hard to tell. But I he, he, he did. Uh, he did. And again, yeah. keep in mind, too, like I said, these particular sketchbooks have watercolor paper, like multimedia paper. Yeah, not right. Paper. Made for that. Yeah. So it holds up for this kind of, but he did an excellent job. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And everybody else is, is everybody in the chat's loving it too. Um, uh, he's, uh, Dan's asking, is this the department of public safety Stallone or Carl urban dread? I told him, you know, when I get to artists that really love stuff, I only come up with the character and I let them decide on the background. I say, I, I need a background of some sort so it doesn't just be stark white. But I let them come up with the, the characterization and the action of the piece. I let okay. them. Okay. Uh, just so you know, Nick Nick is saying he's got to go. Um, thank you, Nick, for getting rallying the likes. I appreciate it as hey. always. And um, he's saying that, uh, Ron, I love you. And uh, thanks for being in the hobby and a great guy. Uh, thank you, Nick. We'll be in touch. All right, and the other dread you saw was mine. What do you mean? He, oh, they probably at the show because you know, he had oh, right that he had that he had done, and oh, I, didn't, I wanted him to do a more expanded piece because that yeah. one was more of a headshot, I think. Right, and what does so? It's a good question, right? Because when they're doing it at the show, Rick asks, "So, how do you keep the oil from sticking to the other pages, especially okay. given that oil takes a lot longer to dry?" So, okay, so this was acrylic. It wasn't. Oh, oil. this was acrylic. This is acrylic. Oh. My pieces, when he does the oil, he has to let it dry for like a week and then he varnishes it and that has to dry for another week. But this was acrylic. And that was one of the things I was concerned about that it wasn't going to dry. But he did it. He started it in the afternoon on one day and he okay. finished it the next day and it had ample time to dry. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, honey. Uh, thank you for uh, the support as always. Um, yeah, I was going to say about uh, you know, the fact that it's acrylic that I, I, I don't worry about that because acrylic dries fast. So, yeah, you don't have to worry too much. It's the oils that takes forever to dry, you know. So, yeah. Um, OK, so excellent. Yeah. Let us now go to a couple of pieces from the same artist um uh, on each one on separate uh, slides these are pretty interesting i love this first one in particular because of the technique and i wonder ron if you can if you happen to know how the technique for the texture was done for this check it out now this is gus malk he's also i think he's out of pennsylvania but this is a charcoal drawing Oh, charcoal wow right this is all char he is a master with charcoal and getting the tones right but yeah this is pencil and charcoal and wow. then they're sprayed with uh fixative so it doesn't smear uh-huh okay and so but did you see him draw this at all yeah he did it he okay. did this piece at a con oh okay what's up creative keep good to see you hey, creative what's going on buddy and um, interesting I'm just curious because I'm trying to see how he, if you, I know, I don't know if anybody can see it at home unless they're on a large TV, but, but when you see this, you know, in larger, uh, the large, the actual scan size, there's like a, a pattern in the hat. Right. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how he but did. He, that. he does it. You can see the little dots and everything. He'll achieve that by using some of the liquid kind of charcoal, I guess he calls it. And he okay. does a little splatter. But he is an expert at tonality. And that's why I like to get his work because he really brings, you have to be careful when you get somebody to do charcoal or pencil drawings because a lot of times they can't get the depth to make it look like it's just gonna just walk off the page. And Gus is a master at that. Oh yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's really fantastic. I just kept, when I was in your you know gallery, I kept sort of staring at this one, just trying to figure out te the technique on how he did the texture of a hat. So, um, hey, I do it and i still can't tell you what he was doing yeah no exactly so uh yeah you guys uh should definitely uh, take the time later to, to click the the link to, to ron's ga gallery that's down here uh, below in the uh, description of this video um and and, and look it on look it up under uh mock m-a-u-k uh and check it out uh larger so that you can see what i'm talking about when i say i think he's I think he's even got a kickstarter going on right now for a sketchbook that he's done oh really 
Yeah, look them up on uh, Kickstarter. Okay, yeah, check that out, guys. A lot of skill, absolutely. Don't sweat the technique. Yeah, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Excellent. So from there, we go to a completely different approach and technique. Everybody check this one out. And interestingly gruesome subject matter. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that, Ron? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he had done he does a lot of sketch covers. And I happened to see this one and I said, okay, this is gross, but I gotta have it. So I mean <laughs> the blob zombie and he's just eating Jubilee. I just thought it was just gross enough. See, my <laughs> wife would look through some of the stuff when, you know, she's trying to figure out how much I spent when I would come back from a con, but she was scared of horror stuff. So every now and then I would sneak something like this. She'd come upon it, drop everything and run, and I wouldn't have to worry about her looking at the rest of my stuff. Right. That is crazy, man. <laughs> Nick's colonoscopy results. Yeah. <laughs> Good one, Ilya uh tastes like fireworks nice uh, that's great yeah absolutely sick yeah you're gonna be sick soon if you keep staring at this that's what it feels like but it's it's wild you know i'm i'm, I'm a horror fan but even i was kind of like like okay this it's a, bit, it's a bit gross you know yeah ju, ju buffet <laughs> good one heart hey, west what's up buddy what's grosser than gross yeah that's the question yeah chewing up on jubilees intestines that's uh, i guess that's that's about as gross as, as it can get you know probably what a real life superhero battle would look like that is true i gotta admit it would get it would get to this point uh in some cases for sure with some of those crazy villains out there you know that's so funny no tripe for me <laughs> stay away stay away peter so funny okay um the next Two pieces we're going to see it's one artist and again both of them i put on one slide just side to side i thought this we these were really nice um one male character one female my favorite is the female well you'll see in a second and i need to ask the question is this his own version of the character or has this version of the character been in comics because i see some beautiful ebony looking yeah this this was Jim O'Reilly. Yeah. Uh, he, did, he did both of these at a con, by the way. At a con? Wow. Yeah, he did one one day and he did the other along with doing other drawings. Other, well, of course. Yeah. When um, Domino had been in the um, uh, the um one of the Marvel movies. And I said, well, you know, would you do it? But this is his concept of what oh. he said. Do you want it to be based on the movie or the comic book? And I okay. asked him to base it on the movie. And this was his concept of that. Just like Iron Spider-Man oh okay your brother's saying to keep it pg i'm still finishing tax returns and that's how it feels yeah <laughs> <laughs> my brother's an accountant okay um yeah okay so so it's his version of of what's okay because i didn't see the the, the movie so you're, you're saying this is not what she looks like in the movie no i mean i okay. mean it's not photorealistic but she was black in the movie oh well then, that's what i'm asking oh right. so she was, she was a black, she was black, black woman right oh wow so this is his his take on her character yeah 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 because i was like okay he clearly i can tell by the face he, he he used photo ref um certainly at least for the face and and probably even for the figure and i was like man i want to know who that woman is because she is yeah hot. her name her name is jazzy beats oh with a D. oh she, so you know yeah, yeah i remember i mean because she's been oh. in a, other movies since then. okay i think her first big movie i believe Oh, she's badass, man. She's sexy oh, yeah. as hell. And not only not only has she's got a nice figure, but I love that hair. I love that hair. You don't see you don't see black women wearing their hair out like that much anymore. Like it's you know what I mean? Yeah, um, and he like I said he he changed the face a little bit, but what you see is pretty much the way she looked in the movie. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that out. That is that so that is that the, the Deadpool movie? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I get wow. That. Okay. All right, let me just get a couple of comments here real quick. Sorry, everybody. Oh, yeah. I got to get a power cord. I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries, Ron. Um, so thank you, James. Yeah, Deadpool 2. Okay, I, I saw the first one, but not the second one. Um, two great-looking pieces. Yeah, they certainly are. Hey, Ian, what's up, buddy? Hello, hello. Uh, wow, these are great for being cranked at a con. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is like, yeah, this is top-shelf stuff. I would have expected this to be... You know done at home and sent in 
through the mail. Um, so getting a Pam Greer vibe. Uh, yeah, exactly. From the old days in the 70s, especially. Uh, Ruben missing out on all the movies on purpose, though, to be honest, Marcus. Uh, not a, not, not, I, I haven't really been a big fan of the Marvel movies. I, I, I seem to be one of those rare fans who tends to have liked the TV shows more than the movies. So, yeah, I don't I don't I don't really watch a lot of them anymore. So, um, yeah, missed out on it. But I don't know. It's one of those things where I think I'll check them out eventually, you know, but I don't really care when as they come out. It's not I don't feel the need. Um, she is just as hot in the movie. Nice, Mike. I like that. I appreciate that. So, OK, more reason to check it out then. Uh, we've got a live. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate that. And uh, Canada has movie theaters. Nice, Ilya. Thank you. Um, yes, we do. How long does it generally take to have an artist draw something like this at a con? And do you wait around? No, nobody waits. Around. I can answer that creative. Nobody waits around for that level of finish. You know, you tell them what you want, you pay them whatever. And you, you know, you, you walk around the con, you do whatever you want, you have fun and you come back later in the day to check out and see if they've gotten to it or not. And that's it, you know, and eventually they'll tell you, okay, either I'm finished or no, no, not yet. Come back tomorrow or come back later. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much how it always goes. Um, if he had a life of show, it'd be one hour. <laughs> Well, well, Marcus, uh, touche, I will say. Touche, touche, for sure. Uh, he's right. Uh, depends on the artist, e exactly. Jeff, time for dinner. We'll catch the second half on Rewind. Thank you, Jeff. Have a great dinner, buddy. Uh, a delayed yellow. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, McDonald. Oh. Tell him I said, hey, loser. We're, yeah. we're part of the Losers Club. Oh, oh you got to go. Loser. <laughs> that is funny. Ruben is the way. Thank you, Ilya. That's funny. Um, Tom, your, 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 uh, fellow brethren from Chicago, the other Tom was here earlier. I don't know if, uh, Tom Kadzalowski, if you're still watching or not, but I know he was, uh, thank you, Mr. Easy Go Lucky. Yes. If you came in and, and are watching right now, please, uh, I would appreciate it if you can hit the thumbs up, uh, right down here below the screen, everyone, uh, really appreciate that. And, um, okay, let us go. Uh, Tom says, Hey, loser back to you. <laughs> and, uh, yes, there we go. All right, let's go. We gotta, we gotta get. We see, we talk so much, and I, I probably did get too many pieces into the show, but that's okay. You need to, you do meet. You guys need to meet each other for sure. Um, yeah, uh, we gotta get start start blasting through these a little quicker. So, okay, next one, your friend Mike Zek. Yes. Now, Mike, um, he had done a couple of commissions for me, and I wanted him to do. Um, a Captain America, he had done a cover for a French comic book or a French magazine. I think, and, it was, uh, I think it was a portfolio, actually. Right. I, he had, it was Daredevil that was in the pose. And I said, well, could you, he said, what do you want me to draw? I said, well, can you do Captain America? So he took the same pose in city scene, but he just changed it to Captain America in a New York scene. And this right. is what came out of it. Right. Very, very nice. Now, was this one, uh, this, this, I, I would have to say this was probably done at home, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, because yeah, I, I sent him the book and he sent it back to me in a few weeks. Okay. Wow. I don't hey, that, think Mike, he does like little small things, like little remarks or something like that, but he doesn't do this kind of thing at, at a con. Yeah, no, no, exactly. That's why I have to ask only because from what I know of Mike and his work and what he's done at cons and at home, this doesn't look at all. Like I would have been shocked if you said he did this at a con, you know? Yeah. Um, tremendous. What you would want from a Zek. Sweet. Says Dan. Perfect Zek cap, says Rick. Incredible Zek piece, says Ilya. And great Zek, says CJ. It absolutely is. Zek is a Philippine artist now. I don't know what you yeah. mean by that. Did he well, move his wife was from the Philippines, and he wound down what he was doing here in the country. He's kind of semi-retired, okay. so he wanted to travel, and now he's spending the majority of his time in the Philippines, where his wife is from. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yep. Wow. So Very I think good. Bob Layton is overseas in Korea. He's supposed to join up with Zach sometime in the fall, I guess. He's okay. coming over to meet with, Jig, uh, with Jiggy and a few other, though, spend some time over there. Oh, that's cool. That'll be fun. Excellent. All right. Let us move on. Um, this next, uh, the next two pieces again, two pieces on one slide, everybody, by one artist. Uh, somebody I'm not familiar with. I'm familiar with the last name only because there are other artists with this last name. I don't think they're related, but 
tell me what you know about uh, this gentleman and his work, uh, Ron. This is Tony Moy. He uh, is a published um, artist. He is very good friends with Daniel Govar. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they, they usually attend the same shows. They're very good friends. Okay. Uh, Tony, I can count among my friends. Now, the War Hulk that you see on the left-hand side was the first one that he did. This is before I had the watercolor pages. So what Tony did was he coated the page with gesso, yeah. and then he painted War Hulk on top of it. But he is a watercolor artist. And oh. that was the second commission he did for me of uh, Wonder Woman. Okay. No, it's fabulous. And, and you know, like somebody had said earlier, um, it's it's amazing how I, I, I just find to have sketchbooks filled with, I mean, filled sketchbooks in general are always impressive to me, you know, because it takes the, it shows the dedication of the time, the patience, and the you know the the, the financial wherewithal of, of the collector. Um, but when I see sketchbooks that have so many painted pieces like you've got, that blows my mind. It, it yeah, I don't know. It just it's a lot because it's a lot. It's a lot more work. It's a more difficult medium to work with, you know, in paints than in just pen and ink. You know, um, so to see so many painted pieces inside sketchbooks, you know, I mean, a lot of people get painted commissions. You know, on a loose, a loose sheet of paper. That's that's one thing. But inside a sketchbook, it, it's phenomenal. I, I I don't know. Yeah, I, I just find it really impressive. So, and you've got, I I, I don't know actually. Do you do, do any of your books? Are any of your books actually filled with only painted pieces? No, I no. I, no. I, I um, I do have painted pieces, but I won't limit to just certain types. I give the uh, artist an opportunity to, to use whatever medium they want. Okay. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um, from there, we go to a uh, known artist. Those of you who may remember him um, taking over, I believe, uh, George Perez uh, on Wonder Woman for a little while during the late 80s. And let's check this one out. Yes. Um, he was in, this artist was introduced to me by Dan Parsons because okay. they're out in California. Right. Dan said, I have a friend of mine. I showed him your sketchbook and he really would like to do something in it. Let me put you guys together. So Chris has done a couple of, um, he did a, a Nova for me first and then he did this one. But cool. um, yeah, he's done a few uh, commissions for me. Excellent. Yeah. And, and it's funny, even when these guys aren't painting, <laughs> a lot of your commissions seem to be colored, if not painted, at least colored. Right. Well, and you know, at the beginning, I mean, you just try to get local artists to do some stuff, but artists are very competitive. Yeah. So they will come back. I had Chris Ivy did a Thanos piece for me and it was black and white. Years, about a year or so later, I showed him the book and it was almost filled. He said, well, do you mind if I go back and add color to that Thanos piece? Because a lot of your pieces are in color and I, I want mine to be in color too. <laughs> so I used something called a watercolor pencils and they were yeah. like pastel pencils, but when you color them in and you wet those, it turns into watercolor. So okay. he did Thanos like that. And then since then, you know, you know, he doesn't even look back. It's not even a question of whether it's going to be in color or not. But I do have pencil pieces, but I'm very careful with who I ask to do a pencil piece because not everybody can get the right depth to right. a pencil piece. Gotcha. Gotcha. Excellent. Well, Speaking of painted pieces, um, the next three pieces, everyone, are by an artist that Ron mentioned earlier and who a lot of you probably met at OAX and I think is really good at oil painting. Um, so we're going to check out three different pieces in a row from him. And let us start off with, I did it for you guys. You guys know how much I appreciate your love for Star Wars, um, so I figured I'd start off with yeah. Ahsoka Tano by Miles Wool, yeah. And uh, his his work um, now this is um, uh, in one of my sketchbooks, but I've got I I think at this point I probably have six or seven, maybe eight painted pieces by Miles Wall. And anybody that was uh, AOX, 
behind his table, he had a 18 by 24 inch uh, fire and ice piece of Dark Wolf. It was on a stand that was mine that I brought to OAX so he could put it on display to show his work. Okay, cool. By the way, looks like your nephew just dropped in. Yes. <laughs> hey, Quilligan, how you doing? <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for coming to check out your unk. Um, yeah, no, I thought it was uh, it, really, really cool. Uh, Marcus is excited about wool. And uh, Mr. Easy Go Lucky thinks it's amazing. That's quite nice. Love this as well, says Ian. He doesn't pull the wool over your eyes. Nice one. <laughs> I love that, CJ. Miles is awesome. And Tom, of course, who did um, a, a show and tell episode with me just a few weeks ago. He, of course, I, I, I showed, I had to, he got one, he got a piece, uh, uh, a Rorschach piece, um, just like you have one from Gus Mock, and he got the one from Miles Wall, and I showed that on the show and tell, so of course he's going to appreciate your Miles work as well, you know, and he certainly did and, do your Rorschach. <laughs> and he was introduced to me by Tony Moy. Oh, and, yeah. Okay, exactly. Miles. yeah. Yeah, really cool. Okay. Let's look at the next one, everybody, also by Miles. Now, Miles is coming out with his own book, and he was doing character study. So this was the first piece he did for me. And I, I he said, well, what do you want me to draw? I said, well, you're developing your own characters. The first one was like a panda. It was like a medieval panda dressed up like a court jester sitting in a tree playing a lute. So I said, well, why don't you do one of your characters? So this is his character, and the name of the character is Will Weasel from his upcoming book that he's putting together himself. Okay. Interesting. And you're saying that upcoming book, will that, that he's going to fund that like as a, as a crowd? I, I don't know. He, he hasn't said how he's going to do it, but oh, he's okay. finishing up with the characters, the character studies and now, and then he's going to put the book, but he hasn't reached out. I maybe it'll be a Kickstarter. I don't know. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, interesting. Pretty crazy looking character. I must say it's like Thor the rat, you know? Mm-hmm. Or I should say Weasel, obviously. Weasel. Yeah, Will Weasel. CJ says, Will Weasel is greater than Beta Ray. <laughs> <laughs> he looks pretty cool, I got to say. I mean, that hammer is huge. I wouldn't want to get knocked by on the, on the head by that thing. But uh, yeah, really, really interesting. Okay, and the third and final piece by Miles that we're going to show tonight, everybody, is this one. I wanted to show an example of his work um, where it's not just cartooning and comic books but his ability to capture likenesses um of real people still comic book related though check it out yeah he did a great job with this piece yeah and it kind of looks like it's it's living when you look at it up close it's a small piece you know but not nearly as big as my other pieces but when i saw it, it was at the end of oax and I was buying some pieces and he said, look, you know, I'll offer you a couple of oil paintings at some good prices. And I had to pick this piece up because especially with the sequel movie coming out shortly. Oh, right. I right. to have it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fabulous. That's a great choice. Um, Rick's, Rick's asking, is the fire and ice piece in your calf? Uh, if you look under, I think when we got back, we created a OAX page or OAX um, section. Uh, in one of my galleries is OAX stuff. Yes, and, you did. Yeah. Yeah. And and I believe Fire and Ice is listed in there. But if not, have them reach to me through the um, CAF and I'll make sure that I get them a scan. Okay. There you go, everybody. Excellent. All right. From him, we will um, move on to an artist who I only got one piece to show from. But it's another one who, again, for me, this was about both his ability to capture likeness with the technique it's a technique it's old an old technique but a one which i've always loved um so i just wanted to show it so i like it and i used to love this show so here we go when i was in art school when you get to where before you graduate they i want you to do your final assignments in your own medium your own style Right. And stippling was my oh style. yeah. And when I saw this one, I had to have it. But yes, I, that was my medium um, of choice in school. Is either using scratchboard or stippling. Oh man, you 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 were using scratchboard? 
Oh yeah, when the original scratch board, now it has different colors underneath and everything. It was the black ink over the clay and that was it. Wow. And, yeah, I use scratch board and uh, stippling. Hey Ron, um, uh, remind me what what years would that have been when you were when you were in the art school? Okay, when I graduated high school, it was 1975, okay. and I went to art school that summer. Right, that uh, summer. Wow. And wow. it was a two year. It was a two year program. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, they were pretty brutal. I I was in a commercial art program because I didn't know what I wanted to do. But the old show Bewitched, that's what the husband did. Darren was a commercial artist. So I said, okay. well, let me do that. Yeah. And uh, they were pretty brutal. Um, we, they would give you assignments in class, time trials, they would call them. And right. if you didn't do it properly, they would come to you in front of everybody in the class and said, OK, you can finish out this class, but we're not giving you permission to go on in the program. Oh, really? Oh, so yeah. They would really, consider, really if, you tough. if you can't do it here, you are not going to be able to do it in New York working in marketing so this is not for you and he would tell you in front of everybody wow yeah it's pretty brutal but i guess you know it's, it is a very competitive field as well so I, did, I guess they just want you know they want you to know like yeah don't waste your time unless you're gonna really bust your ass and mm -hmm. you know really dedicate yourself to it um yeah so much patience and in, in, in stippling um you know to do it. yeah of course absolutely yeah gotta be uh, but then again there's a lot of patience to, to be an illustrator in general uh, but yes, it's a it's a it's a time consuming technique for sure. Um, excellent. Let me get that one off the screen and say a quick hello. Hello. What's up, Carl? Incredibly late. Of course you are. Uh, but don't worry, even though we're like, I don't know, uh, 70 to 75 percent of the way through the typical three hour length. Um, I'm, I think I'm only hitting the 50 percent of the pieces, but that's because I got twice as many pieces as usual. But we're picking up steam now, so don't worry. I hope you can stick around and check it all out. Uh, Miss Kravitz, don't play. Yeah, bewitched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom says, but if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. And that's yeah. pretty much what they told you in yeah. class. That's it. Excellent. So, um, all right. So the next four pieces, everybody, are by one artist. I really was attracted to the, um, the style, combination of, of style and his coloring. I um, really like these pieces. So I thought I'd like to show them to you, especially for those of you who, who like um, to commission artists. But this might be something that, you know, somebody who, who you might want to reach out and commission if you're not familiar with who it is. So the first piece is a scarecrow. Now, Brad Green is an artist that I work with. I've got a few of his pieces on. The Hulk transformation scene that he did was tremendous. Black Panther and some others. Well, he did a villain's compilation piece. I asked him to pull the scarecrow out and turn it into a larger drawing with a slightly different pose. And this is what he did. And oh. when I would send my sketchbook to him, I would always get him to do two drawings at, at the time. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. That, uh, okay. But he never, I don't, to this day, I don't think he's ever done any conventions. I used to try to talk him into it all the time, but. Oh, wow. So, uh, wow. No, he doesn't do conventions. Interesting. No, not during those years. I don't know if he does it now. But right, right. He yeah. didn't then. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and yes, Carl, you've got essentially an entire usual show and tells worth of art. We've got 20 more pieces to show. Um, so here we go. Um, the next one by Brad Green is this cool Hulk yes, transformation. The Hulk transformation. Yeah, looks pretty crazy. And and it's it's funny because when I look from left to right on Bruce Banner, you know when he's you know when he's just Bruce Banner, the second piece looks like he's doing like a crazy dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But again, I leave the action of the piece up to the artist. Yeah. For this one though, is it is it that like that's what you wanted? You said, hey, can you just show? Can you do me no, the? No, I said I, I told him I said I wanted to do a Hulk transformation. Yeah, and okay. He said normally I would do something with six figures and not just the you know the four you see in the front. Right. And I said, well, we don't have enough real estate for that, and I need to show more detail. So he decided to put more movement into each piece, so I didn't have he didn't have to have those extra two characters drawn out. Okay. Have a good night, Jason. Thanks for dropping in, Matty. Hey, good night, Jason. Thank you. Good night.
Um, yeah, no, it's 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 cool. I I think it was really really cool. So overall, you were happy with it? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. This this piece gets a lot of views on my cat. Yeah. Hulk is popular, and Hulk transformations has always been a popular thing as well. You know, so even for us um, uh, published comic art guys, I mean, when you when you get uh, a, when you can find a page that contains the transformation, everybody loves that. Not just for Hulk, of course. Like, you know, whether it's Thor, Hulk, you know, whoever transformation. Well, page. when he oh. did the Hulk, I came up with an idea a couple years later, I think. And I wanted him to do a transformation between Billy Batson and Shazam. Oh. And he did that for me. It's in my calf also of the lightning hitting Billy Batson and you see him become Shazam. Wow. That 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 sounds awesome. I wish I would have I wish I would have noticed that one. Yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Ron. I got a good yeah. eye for it. <laughs> Yeah, but Brad Green, his attention to detail is amazing. Oh, it is. It's it's this one. This one blew my mind. I I love this one. I was just like, wow. This is so so cool. And I I love the fact that uh, Billy's in there, not just a posed, muscular, you know, heroic uh, stance uh, for for Shazam for Captain Marvel. You know, um, yeah. It's it it adds to it. It makes it special when they're both there that way. Um, yeah, and that technique of, of you know with with all the energy exploding off the bottom of the floor, it's so cool, so so cool. So it's like wow, I like the colors, they're muted. You know, oftentimes artists um, will color the, these characters super bright red, bright yellow. You know, and I, I asked him about that, and what he wanted to do was when the lightning hit and the lightning flash, the colors would be muted because you see that lightning haze, that white in front of everything. That's why he did the colors the way he did. Right. Oh, good choice. Yeah, I love it. I, I really, really, really like it. Very cool. And so that's the third piece um, by Brad Green, everybody. And I did say we have four. We have one last one. And this one um, I love, too, because the, the, the starkness of the colors off the, coming off the background um with a memorable scene you'll a lot of you guys uh our age and older will, will remember um really really cool so check this out yes yeah death of the and, family um, he, he didn't want to do it exactly the way it was done in the comic books he said i want to do a little bit more modern take on it that's why the costumes look different and right. he said in the comic books they didn't add the blood and he wanted to make sure i was okay with that yes yeah. he came up with oh that's cool and uh, remind us, Ron, this particular piece, is it a sketchbook or loose? This is a, in my sketchbook. In a sketchbook. Wow. What a great sketchbook to look through and see all this stuff, man. Wow. And and so if this is a sketchbook, does uh -huh. that mean he first, I mean, how do you get the bl a black background? Look, I've got a, um, a piece by Dave Ryan who did the um, Ghost Rider. He did the same. I don't oh, know how. Yeah. But to get that kind of stark black and have it pop like that, I have no idea. Wow. Interesting. That is so cool that this is in a sketchbook. Wow. Yeah, Rick says the blood makes the piece. Yeah, it's a nice extra touch, you know? Um, yeah, I, I love this. I love this. So really, really cool. Actually, I like all four of them. That's why I wanted to show four pieces by uh, by Brad. I thought, like, man, I never heard it. I, I always like it when I've, you know, never heard of a an artist and and their art kind of blows me away, you know. It's always fun. It adds. It, it's it's a it's a fun part of discovering. You know, fun part of being in the hobby is discovering new artists you've never heard of before. So, yeah, that is amazing indeed, Ian, for sure. And yeah, amazing for a sketchbook. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. For sure, for sure. And uh, speaking of Dave Ryan, that you mentioned, Dave Ryan, um, another artist um, who I uh, his work I'd never heard of before. And who we will be seeing more of very soon. Um, but next, I want to show everybody one piece by this one artist who, who I am familiar with. And I'm sure a lot of you are too. I just wanted to say this one piece. It, look, it's hard for me to just ever choose my favorite of anything. You know, song, color, food, whatever. Um I can't do it for art either, but I will say I love this piece so much. It's coming up. 
I almost feel like I should say it's my favorite one of the night. It probably isn't, but it's up there. This piece has so much energy in it, not only in the art, in the background that he puts some energy, literally, but the figure positioning here, the stance, everything about this, it just, it just, there's so much kinetic energy blasting out of this thing. I love this. Uh, and by the way, it's a character I have no particular interest in, and it's one of my favorite pieces. So everybody check this out. I love this. So this was a piece I bought from uh, Jim Jim and it. These are one of uh, Jiggy's next art crew from the Philippines. Right. right. And I bought this at OAX, but there was two pieces I bought. I bought the Blue Beetle, and he also did Spider-Man 2099, the, um, the Hispanic character. And this is also an Hispanic character. So he wanted to do those, and I, bought, I snapped them up right away. His attention to detail is amazing. Oh, it's so, so, so beautiful. I was just like, wow. Like, I'm not I'm not a commission guy. I mean, I've had maybe a handful done in my entire 26 years in the hobby. But when I saw this, I was like, wow. Like, rarely do I have any, I don't feel compelled to own a commission. I just like to enjoy them vicariously through commission collectors' collections, you know? Um, but as I looked at that, I was just like, like, that's so, I would love to have that in a portfolio. That is just, there's something about this. It's just, it's exploding off the page for me, you know? I just thought, wow, it's just so, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I, there's not enough superlatives I can I can use, but yeah, amazing. Yeah, Jimenez doesn't disappoint. Uh, yeah, nice. Jim's a favorite of mine, says Tom. And uh, David Mack is just exclamation points because he's excited. And Jimenez over delivers. Yeah, I got a lot of fans here. I got four pieces. No, he, he does, he does wow. tremendous work. I've I've been a fan of his for a while, and working wow. with Jiggy's crew is great. Yeah, and uh, Carlos, no, there are no commissions by Grummet tonight. <laughs> 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 and uh, explosive frenetic energy. Yes, exactly, CJ. Exactly. So yeah, so there you go, everybody. Uh, super, super happy to show this one. I just thought it was just really exciting. Um, okay, so the next four, I believe it's uh, four pieces, also by one artist, each on a different um, separate uh, slide. And this is an artist that Ron, you mentioned him earlier because he's a friend. I believe it was the friend of Tony's. Who was Tony Moy's friend? Um, Daniel Govar. Daniel Govar, that's him. Okay. I, think I have probably over 20 pieces wow. of art from Daniel. Wow. When right. I met him, he was at a small, small show. He was sharing a t one table with another artist. It was when he just started, and oh. we've been friends ever since. Wow, fantastic. All right, well, we're going to see four of those 20-plus pieces you've and got. His is all watercolor. All watercolor. Okay, interesting. So here's the first one, everybody. Um, I am not familiar with the characters on this one, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what this uh, is here. This is from the movie, the Disney movie Brave. That's Merida. Oh, I never she saw had that ghost bear that everybody was afraid of. Oh. And she was she was the one in her village to face the ghost bear. Okay, wow, it's, uh, it's so a, beautiful. It's a, it's a Scottish story with the okay. red, yeah, it's a Scottish oh. story. How interesting! Wow, yeah, it, 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 it's. I just thought I love watercolor and to when see I. That, when I started this particular book with the watercolor paper, I needed to start it strong. So yeah. I went to Dan and asked him to do something that was going to be eye-catching and strong for the first piece in the book. And this was it, because other artists would follow suit. Yeah. And so this is on the first page as soon as you open the yeah. front cover. This is the first page. Yeah. That's a great way to start, man. Yeah. Um, Arndt would like that movie. Who's Arndt? Or, oh, Arwin. <laughs> yeah. You know, Marcus, um, she may have Arwin. seen it already. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask her, though. Um, Brave, it's called, right? Yes, I think it's called Brave. But, oh. yeah, but it's a Disney animated movie, you know, before Moana and all of that. This was right. Brave. Okay. Okay, excellent. I'll keep it in mind to, to, to maybe check that out. It looks so cool. I love it. Love it. Um, Tom says, Ron, that's wonderful. My daughter grew up loving that movie. It's a, it's a great film, especially for young girls. 
because it shows, you know, how girls can stand up and be powerful and own their own, you know? Oh, be great. Afraid. When I love other stuff like were that. Afraid, when the men were afraid, she stood up. Oh, that's, that's, um, that's great. Yeah, because that's what I always wanted to show um, Arwen, my daughter, when she was growing up. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's never too late. I mean, she's still only like, you know, not 15 yet. So um, maybe we can watch that one together. Great movie and a lovely piece. Awesome. Mission accomplished for an impactful first page. Yeah. And great watercolor. And it was a good story, too, uh, says uh, Rick. So excellent. So thanks, everybody, for your um, feedback on that one. Great first piece by Daniel Govar. And here we go with the second one. Also something I thought, wow, really Thank great you. design. I just wanted to let you know, Ron, what I really loved, other than the colors, I love that he integrated the right hand side border into the cape rather than close off the border you know right I've, and this character for people that don't know this was a dark horse comic book well i didn't read the comic book i knew about this was dark horse's equivalent to the shadow she was ghost and she would appear in the in the cemeteries and stuff she could pass through walls and and things like that but this is the character called ghost like the think about the like the shadow okay yeah, I always thought she kind of looked like a modern female version of Shadow. But would you say, Ron, that, I mean, do you know for a fact that if you read the stories, it kind of reads that way? Is she kind of based? Well, I, I, never, read, I never read the stories, but for what I know about it, it's kind of have a, uh, an, an unlike, it's kind of like the, um, the dead man or something like that where she was killed. And she comes back to right wrongs and she carried like the 245s the way oh. the shadow did and, and everything. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I, I, I remember that from the shadow, the shadow was all black and she wore all white. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like she's like the, the yeah, like the shadow, but opposite, you know? Opposite in the sense that okay, she's female instead of male, mm -hmm. she's all white instead of all black, you know? Yeah. So um interesting. I always wondered about that comic. It never really grabbed me enough when I would see the imagery to say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll read that, you know. Um, but I do remember it being popular for a time back in like the 90s, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I always kind of wondered about it, but never enough to, to, to give it a try. CJ says, fine use of a two-color palette. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. So from there, let us go to the third piece of Daniel Govar's work. And that is this one that you mentioned earlier in the show. No, well, um, this is the one. Well, I have a Ghost Rider by uh, Dave Ryan, but this is oh, the one I, true. It, yeah. I wanted based on the first movie, okay. and uh, as the the Sam Elliott character about him being the uh, old Ghost Rider from the West. And if you oh, see the, the time, you remember they were both traveling to get to that town of yeah. San Benghazi. Benghazi That's this, yeah. Them flying across the desert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is fabulous. I oh my gosh, I love this. Oh my gosh. I mean, I love the Western genre. I like the you know the 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 modern day, you know, 80s and onward ghost rider character. Um, so I love the sort of mix of, of both, you know. Um, and I've always had a love for any character with a skull for a head. So yeah, this is so cool. I mean, on the horse and the flames, and I mean flames coming out of the head, even the horse's head and the snout. You know, um, yeah, the whole thing is just wow. That's that's really really cool. Um, by the way, I, I'm familiar with Daniel Govar in the sense of you know that I know a lot of people who have who have gotten commissions from him. But is that all he is? is does he just do? No, he he has he does illustrations for books. He does a lot of uh, Star Wars cards, things like oh. that. They're all painted. Okay. Uh, and like I said, he's done so many. He's his when I when he first started, one of the the favorite things that he loved to paint was dragons. Okay. He is a real big fan of uh, what is it the uh, the endless the the dreams or the Neil oh, Gaiman. Oh yeah, he does a lot of that stuff too. But primarily, he does illustrations for books. He does covers. He does he does he's really blown up over the years, and his work is excellent. Oh, excellent! Oh, I we I can tell. I think people can tell by the. The three pieces we've shown so far, and now we're going to show his fourth and final piece for this evening, everyone. Um, check this one out. 
Now, this is a very large piece. It's like 20 by 24 or something like that. Wow. This is a piece that he did for the OAX auction, and I won it at the auction. Oh, cool. Excellent. Wow. It's beautiful. I just thought, wow, this is like so, it's like a fantasy illustration of the comic book character. I mean, everything about it. I just, great design, great color palette. Yeah, this is just lovely. Wow. Did it not not that you need to reveal, but did you it was it something that broke the bank or something you thought no, was pretty affordable? Actually, it was amazing because there was only one other person bidding for me. Oh really? Daniel was there and uh, we were looking. I noticed it and started bidding on it, but for some reason it was kind of later on in the auction and people had really bought of a lot of expensive stuff. So I ended up getting it for like seven hundred and something bucks. Dan was shocked, but he said at least somebody bought it that he liked. Oh. So I was very, very fortunate because this easily is excess of, you know, this is thousand, this is thousands of dollars if he was to do this as a commission. As a commission. Wow. Right. Oh, gosh. And, and you're saying it only landed at like seven something? It was seven hundred and something dollars. Wow. And, oh. and I was very, I thought it was a joke, like somebody was going to jump in at the end and, and, but they never did. And I was just grateful for that. You must have been elated. Yes, I was. If I was, <laughs> if I was a couple years younger, I may have done a backflip. <laughs> but I didn't want to break a hip. So, yeah. I got you, man. I got you. I, I know exactly where you're coming from with that. So um, I'm going to get this frame soon. But like I said, it's a very large piece. Wow. Oh, look at that. Tom oh, yeah. And it, they, were laughing, they were laughing at me because I had never done an auction before. So right. Tom and a bunch of guys were sitting there. So somebody was asking me a question. And, you know, I was waving my hands around and I had the paddle in my hand. So I'm waving the thing all around. I said, oh, crap. They said, Ron, you're buying everything. I said, what? And so I, and I, <laughs> luckily, they, Nick was running the auction and he didn't see it. But I could have been my, waving my hand around. It's like you're placing a bid. I wasn't even paying attention. That's funny. So I got to ask now. How many total pieces did you win at that auction? I only I only bid on this was the only piece that I bid it on. Okay. Wow. The only one. Okay. But I bought a lot of stuff from the, the show itself, from the different right, artists, right. things like that. But this was the only thing that I bid on. Usually when there's an auction and there's a Dan Govar piece, I'm usually involved in the auction. Okay. Cool. Which is why you have 20 or more. Yes. Yes. Right. But he's been I've been getting his commissions and things for Man, it's got to be over 15, 16 years. Wow. That's awesome. That's great. Awesome. So um, excellent, everybody. All right. We will move on to the next artist then. And uh, from there, another artist who I, <clears throat> I believe is an artist that I'm not familiar with, um, a Gavarian. <laughs> yes, he's a Gavarian. Um, and I put so there's two. I thought I thought these two pieces. I put two pieces again on one slide, and just because I thought they looked perfect together. And um, yeah, so let's check this out. And let Ron tell us a little bit about these two. Oh, <laughs> this is uh, Brett Barkley again. Known him for many years, and uh, he on my calf page in the front. There's a couple of pieces that he did, Afro Samurai versus Kuma. And then he did, um, he's done a, he did a blade piece for me. He also did a piece where Afro Samurai was um, fighting Beatrix Kiddo from Kill Bill. Oh yeah. So, but this one, I wanted to flip it around instead of the hero being the prominent character, I wanted to feature some villains. And you can see Bullseye and you can see the Kingpin, but you look at the Bullseye piece, you see Daredevil is way in the back on the top of the building. So I wanted the villains to be featured. Prominent, yeah. Right. No, it's fantastic. Both of them, fantastic pieces. Um, do you know anything about Brett Barkley? I, I, is he just like well, a- Well, he's, he's, based, he's, he's based out of Texas. Okay. He's done a lot of illustration work and things too, but over the years, but I've known him for a long time. He's yeah. worked on a couple of books, um, independent stuff. Okay. But um, he's, a, he's a fan. As you can see, he's got a great mind and fantastic eye for stuff. Yeah. But like I said, he's done many. When he did my Blade piece, he hadn't even seen Blade. So right. he went out and rented the movie that weekend so he could do my Blade commission. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
that's funny yeah no they're both excellent I, I love them both yeah it's like wow as a daredevil these, fan. these are um both in my 10 by 14 sketchbook wow so cool um do they happen to be um side by side by the chance or were they yeah, they're um, one page after the other they're not oh, yeah. See, in the way the book works you would have a when you turn the page you would it would be blank on the left hand side and then the next drawing but you i don't know if you noticed there's some that are double paged yes so what yes. I do is i would do a title page and then i would glue the next two pages together and that would make it a title page then you turn and it goes into a double page that way you could have them side by side without being bled through or interfered with anything right Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's important to, to keep in mind, obviously, when you're doing commissions uh, in sketchbooks, you know? So yeah, fantastic. Uh, really, really happy to uh, to find these as well. So um, excellent, okay. We're making really good progress, with speeding it up, everybody. As you guys know, I'd like to try to get each episode in under three hours, there's 15 minutes to go, and I'm finally down to the last 10 pieces or 10 slides, so looks like we're gonna be able to do it, everyone um oh and before anybody uh just if i may really quickly sorry ron give me a moment um if i may just to in case anybody drops out um so heart we have our buddy heart here in the in the chat um next weekend if you're wondering what i'll be doing next weekend and i'll say this at the end of the show as well but i just want to do it now in case uh people start dropping off because it's getting late um next weekend is sales uh art claiming weekend so yes the sunday night show will be a claim sale with heart hearts uh, starting to whittle down his collection so i'm going to be helping him um try to sell and, and, and find some new homes for his artwork but i need you guys to know that it's a two-part sale um so it's going to be saturday and sunday so I just wanted to make that clear that on Saturday, it's not at my usual time. Okay, so it's very early in the day. Check this out. Okay, so this is the first show. It's gonna be Saturday. Um, for the West Coasters among you, you're gonna have to wake up if you wanna attend. It'll be at nine in the morning, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, e uh, mountain time, uh, 11 a.m. Central, and right at lunchtime on the East Coast. For those of us on the East Coast, that's noon um and the reason i'm doing that is because i wanted to fit in as many time zones as possible and this also allows us to fit in uh the united kingdom at 5 p.m and europe most of europe at 6 p.m and even asia at a not too late midnight so there you go that's saturday so please remember saturday everybody and then of course at my usual uh day and time sunday night at 8 p.m eastern five o'clock pacific will be the second part of the sale all right but i will remind everybody again um at the end of this show um let me see uh, where was i with the could get a couple of comments here let's just go for four hours we are here for, I'm, I'm sure you are but I, i'm sure i'm sure ron has uh, better things to do what are you doing next week and i wonder i guess i guess you know now um I have a heartfelt goodbye to his art indeed Heart, we need a sneak peek. There's no sneak. You, you tune in next week, Gil, and you'll get all the peaks you need. Uh, looking for one specific piece from Heart's collection. I'm sure it's not going to be in this sale. Uh, will Heart be in cosplay? Hopefully not. And then me to win a sale, I'll claim first. All right. Um, all right. So let us continue with the show and tell everybody the last 10 um, pieces. Um, let's see. So the next piece is, ah, yes. Um, so we got three pieces on the first slide. I got two pieces and then one more by the same artist on another slide, All right? So we'll check out the first two here by Mike Akamoto. Mike Akamoto. He is a master of, he uses uh, airbrush and he uses uh, pastel pencils. Right. And as you can tell, he has a very, very light touch. Yeah, it's very soft right very soft it's yeah. a pleasure to watch him work uh he did a, a well i don't know what the next piece is but he's been retired for a while he's out of uh, west virginia but okay. he agreed he did baltimore a few years ago and 
he wanted to do one last commission for me and he worked on it while he was at Baltimore. So people can watch him work. Everybody wow. wanted him to do commissions and he just turned them down. They weren't happy with me after seeing <laughs> his stuff. Oh, they were but jealous. He has, his, he has a geisha samurai that he did with the cherry blossoms that everybody loves. Bonjour, bonjour, Lyle. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Lyle. Smooth and dreamy. Yes, very much so. Um, as I recall, and Rick says, a soft touch is no easy task with a large pipe wrench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah quite so. Um, as I recall, wasn't wasn't Mike the artist? Um, or if any, if, if in case Ron doesn't know anybody in the chat, um, wasn't he the one doing on a pale horse back in the yes, early yes, 90s? Yes, yes, that's him. It I was read the whole series. Matter of fact, that's how I met him. I had read oh. that series of books by Piers Anthony back in the day. And I was walking by his table and I saw a piece of art. I said, that looks like it comes from um, the incarnations of immortality. He said, you're exactly right. That's how I started talking to him and we became Okay, wow, very, very cool. Yeah, that's neat. And and so you say, wow, so he's he's retired to the point at this point where not only does he not do professional work, but he doesn't even really well, want to I, do I don't think he's retired from, I guess his job was in graphic arts or whatever, but right. as far as I know, he's he'll do, if he feels the urge, he'll do right. a commission. But he has to be excited about the project. Yeah, I, I get it. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, if it really gets to me, I'm, I'm in the mood and I'll do it, but I'm not going to to open up commission lists and stuff. If I call him up or if somebody that I know well, I'd be happy to talk to Mike on their behalf if they want something from him. Well, that's a very nice thing for you, uh, uh, from you to to to, to do, uh, Ron. So thank you. Um, so you heard it, you heard it, folks. He's he's you know Ron's made a lot of offers tonight to put you in touch with a lot of people, uh, a lot of artists in, regarding commissions. So any of you guys watching that are commission people, those of you on Rewind especially, um, there you go. You heard it here first. So reach out to Ron. Um, and uh, keep in mind that um, they're pricey, but Dan, he does oversized pieces and paintings when he does the um, his Star Wars series. He's done a couple different series. Who are you and talking about, Ron? This is Dan Govar. Oh, Dan Govar. Right, and he's done pieces where he'll feature the character, but he also features their particular ship in the same, in the same painting. And those are oversized for the cards, and he does have those things available. And I think he's working on a new set now. Okay. Very cool. And who do we have here, Ron? This is my youngest sister. This is my sister, Molly. Hey, Hi, Molly. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in to support, bro. That's awesome. And um, excellent. Okay, everyone. And we have one more piece, as I said, by Mike. And this one is very uh, lovely as well. Really like this. That's why I thought, okay, I've got three. One of them has to go on a um, slide by itself. Uh, the full piece plus a close-up. I figured you'll see in a second why I chose this one to be that. Here we go. Yeah, this was one of the first pieces that Mike did for me, and it's become one of the most viewed pieces on my gallery. I think it's like 6,000 views. Wow, that's a lot, yeah. Yeah, not surprising, but, Ron. Yeah, yeah, this his is one of <laughs> yeah, his geisha samurai. Wow. And so is this, is this, uh, like a character of his or is it just no, he, he, he just we character. talked about what kind of characters that I wanted he did an African warrior female African warrior but I wanted something because it happened to be cherry blossom season here in the DC area all right and well I'd like to see some sort of female warrior but I need it to be soft and I also but I want her to display or just emote power I mean very soft but and this is what he came up with yeah yeah that's uh it's got power and as carlos says boote yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that your sister even likes it <laughs> that's a good question actually it brings up a, an interesting question um ron does your family um in particularly in particular your, your siblings or anybody really uh, your, your your close friends um what do they think about your fascination with this 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 particular hobby well first of all no one's ever seen all of my art right. and they know about different pieces if they come to the house they'll see some things i've got a 33 inch 30 30 pound blade statue 
sit in my living room on a, on a custom pedestal. Wow. But I mean, they come by and, and I wanted to do these, this kind of stuff for their statues and uh, paintings and all kinds of things in the house. But I wanted the place to have some art that would appeal to everybody, depending, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of art you were into. Right. Very interesting, actually. I mean, to think about the others. But then again, I, I have to say, like, I buy art for myself only, really. Um, and then when I framed a whole bunch of paintings, put them around my house, um, I mean, I, I definitely picked the stuff that I wanted to, to look at the most. But I, could, I couldn't help but also thinking, oh, you know, if people were to walk into the house, you know, would they sort of look at this and appreciate it in some way, you know? And I, I thought about that, too, you know? But there's so many different styles and different things in the house that it's always something that appeals. To yeah. Something. Well, interesting you say that because Marcus is asking, would they care more about the watches? Well, again, there's <laughs> other collections of things in the house too, but you have people that like that and that's what they want to see. Yeah. I don't show them all, but I'll show them a nice cross section of stuff. Gotcha. Excellent. All right. Okay. So. The next piece, everybody, we're going to go to is um, it's a it's a two part piece. And so it's one page that leads into. So it's a, a title page. Yeah. And then when you turn the title page, it goes into a two pager. There but you we go. We wanted to do something that was interesting for the title page to draw you in to turning the page. Right. And so we'll look at the title page first. Here we go. And pay attention to the guy with the gun. Look at his hand and you'll see. You know, you can read the rest, but pay attention to the tattoo on his hand. Yeah. And of course, I love the lettering and that's all really neat. And of course, he's got the snake tattoo on the hand there. And that's pretty cool. So, all right. So that's the right side page. And then you turn this page and that reveals a double page. And look at the body in the water and look at his hand. Yeah. That is so cool. That is so, so cool, man. I mean, like the image of the shadow himself, all that at the top is amazing. But honestly, I'm even more impressed with all the bridge and water work. You know, I mean, that it's just spectacular. When I met this artist, he wanted, he did a green arrow and black canary piece. But okay. I challenged him, the movie The Shadow would come out. And I love that bridge scene at the beginning with Alec Baldwin. Yeah. And I said, I want to do something with that scene, but really dramatic and crazy. He said, you know what? I'm going to do the best piece in this book. And he says, it's got to be a two pager. And we talked it out and mapped it all out. But this greatly exceeded my expectations. Oh, I can imagine. Wow. And, and, tell it's, me all, and it's all pen and ink work. All pen and ink. Okay. All pen and ink. Okay. So I guess the red highlights are just marker? No. Well, no. He used red ink. Oh. Okay, that's very, very interesting. A bridge over troubled bodies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, well put. Um, and Ron, was, was, was this a piece, uh, or the, the, you know, the two-part piece, was it done at home or, or at a con? No, no, yeah, this was, this was not done in the convention. This was done at his home. Okay, because that, that, that would have been crazy impressive. But yeah. Because, and when he did it, he didn't want to take the responsibility. So when you look at the first page, when you turn it, the next two pages are blank. And then you turn it again, and that is the two pages. But I needed to, I bought spray adhesive, spray, right. uh, spray glue, and glued those two pages together, the title page and the page after it, to turn it into this. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's really, really neat. Wow. And I got to say, it's um, it's got to be a thrill just to, I mean, it's it's always fun to, then it was really fun for me to, to go through the gallery and, and make my picks, you know, for the show tonight. Um, but it makes me think like, wow, to pick up one of your sketchbooks and just flip through it one at a time in person, that's got to be a, a thrill. That's got to be yeah, fun. There's a lot of people that love that. And like I said, I'm known more for the sketchbooks than people know my name. You're the sketchbook guy. you know. Yeah. That kind of, but you see the looks on the people's faces and the smiles because not every piece will resonate. But as a collection, when you go, you can tell when somebody hits on something that brings back memories for them, like your comic book art, like your published stuff. Right. People remember that page or they remember that book. But people remember these images and these characters. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Stevie B, what's up, buddy? 
Yeah, better late than never. I'll watch on replay. Wanted to say hi to both of us since it's been hey, a while. Hey, Stevie B. Definitely been a while, Stevie B. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you dropping in to say hello, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, so no, that's, uh, that's yeah, like I said, it's, it seems like a lot of fun to me. And so yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. Um, okay, so excellent. So the last uh, six pieces, everyone, the next two are by the same artist. So we've got two in a row um this next one and this is by an artist who not only have i not heard of him before i i wonder ron if you can tell me if you know whether his last name is actually real or if this is some kind of a pseudonym let's check out the first one everyone yeah that's a pseudonym he's okay. out of california okay. and he's done a few pieces for me but his photo i sent him i looked and I found pictures of the actress from the movie of Gogo Yubari. Okay. And I went to him and I said, okay, you've done a, I've got Kill Bill. What, the background piece that you used for your show for me tonight was also done by him. And that was Katana from the um, Suicide Squad. But if you look at the kanji, and, and it looks like blood when you actually look at it, it's then the letters mean life and death. Oh, cool. And she yeah. was a little psychotic little somebody in the movie. And I wanted him to really capture that. And I think he did. Cool. And by the way, you have both your brother and your sister are <laughs> talking to each other, saying that, that uh, they mentioned that you started off with garbage pail kids. Yo, no, actually not garbage pail kids. What I collected was wacky packages. Oh, the wacky that, packages. Yeah, yeah. And I was able to meet Jay Lynch, who was responsible for a lot of those cards. He's passed on now. Yes. But he did in my sketchbooks, he did two, he recreated two um, wacky packages cards for me in my sketchbooks before he passed. Okay. Oh, what's up, Lance? Look at Lance. Lance. There you go. Lance says the first name is great also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but awesome. um, yeah, his, his name is, you know, but he goes by this particular name and I think he's on um, Instagram and everything like that. But I have several commissions by him and his work. He did a Wolverine versus Silver Samurai piece for me too. But he's, I've got about, I think, six or seven pieces by him. Cool. Cool. Well, speaking of another piece by him and speaking of, you know, you guys remember earlier when I said about that Blue Beetle piece by Jim Jimenez, uh, possibly being one of my favorites of the night. Well, this next one also would be up there as one of my favorites of the night. And uh, unsurprisingly, you, Ron, just mentioned it. So here it is. Let's take a full glorious look at it. Why don't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he used he used gold ink to do the with the what looks like it's kind of yellow but it is bright gold wow it looks it's an excellent piece no it looks it to me on my computer at least to me it looked gold all along yeah but it's very shiny okay when you see it in person but yeah oh. it looks gold but it's very shiny and oh. the look the face the action of it i mean it just looks spot on wow everything about this is just phenomenal to me i mean the entire composition with that background her, her. We, we talked about the action of the piece, but we talked about the background because originally it wasn't supposed to have a background. Right. And I said, I have to have some sort of background to make that piece stand out. And we talked about it. And this is what he came up with. Man. Oh, so he just came up with it on his own. Yeah, yeah he did. We talked. I said I needed a minimal background. And I said, but I needed something classic to make this piece pop. Do you have any ideas? He said, I got you covered. And this is what he came up with wow wow he 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 man he came up with something just it's just perfect absolutely well, i've gotten some as much as people like it i've had some complaints oh yeah well yeah. I, I, before before you say it ron i just want to mention just because i only because you brought it up just now because I, I i started off by saying that oh i love everything about this the truth is there's one thing i can nitpick and i'm i'm just curious to see now now that you've it, mentioned it, it's I, the, I'm um, curious to see what you're going to it, say. It's the flower that's so large on her jacket. Oh. But that's what people didn't like. But the rest of it, see, it goes along with the symbol for her clan. And that's what it was for. But I thought it could have been a little smaller. But when you look at the piece as a whole, I don't really have any complaints for it. Right. So do you want to know what my nitpick would have been? Go ahead. Okay. So it is 
related to that giant flower, but it's not the fact that it's gigantic. It's the fact that he drew it as a very, just, just like a, a simple flat flower. When in fact, if you look at the leather of the jacket, you know, underneath it and all around it, right? Yeah, it's actually, you see all the curves of the leather and stuff. So he should technically have drawn the flower that way as well. But this is what I think. This is what I think. Yeah. I had a piece that a lady did for me. Megan uh, Hetrick did a piece for me. And it's I know called lady, lady in White. And yeah. on this, there's a sign above the lady's head because she's sitting in a speakeasy in a bar. Oh, cool. You look at the sign and it says danger. And it's got the little skull and crossbones in red. Well, Megan told me that the reason she did that was she dropped a marker on the page in the book and she <laughs> needed to cover it up. So yeah, she actually. put it into that sign. So I'm thinking he may have done something wrong on the drawing. It was too far in. And he just put that on there to cover it up. Oh, interesting. So interesting. he could have textured if it. I think if it had been planned from the beginning, I think there would have been more texture to it. But you're absolutely right. But I think he was covering up something. Interesting theory, my friend. Wow. Wow. I guess I should have known. By the way, you parked your car sideways. And oh, then... yeah. Wouldn't lie. Yeah, I know. He did, um, this artist did two pieces for me at that time. He did the priest you're about to show, but he also did a Muhammad Ali piece because Muhammad Ali had just passed away. So he's a Muhammad Ali. He did the piece you're about to show. And then when Chadwick Boseman died, I found a photo from him in a magazine. He duplicated that photo down to even the texture of the sports coat that Chadwick was wearing in my wow. sketch. But go ahead. Cool. Um, all right, so everybody, just FYI, it's the last four pieces, and um, I'm sorry, last four slides, two of the slides have two pieces each, so it's six pieces total, but on four slides, and here we go, let's take a look at, hold on a second, uh, oh, let me just see the last couple of, uh, she's got my back, I would advise not getting killed by her, her sword trapped the souls of its victims, right, yeah. That's right. Little Red Corvette. You, you know that, Rick. Yeah, come on, my music man. And yeah, let's check out the first piece by this artist right here. Yeah, this is Dave Ryan. And he said, I challenged him to see if he could do it. He pulled this off in my sketchbook. Wow. Uh, I, so, so I always say, like, I, I'm, I'm, I've been a, a lover of you know, music my entire life, like way before comics, superheroes and the, and the like. So I really love it when comic book collectors get um, commissions uh, related to music, you know, because it's it, it it melds both of my loves, you know. Well, I've I've got more than just two of the uh, passions, but those two are, are you know two of the biggest ones. And to to see to see um, collectors get comic book artists to do music related uh, themed artwork, I love it. I love it. And this is and, and Dave uh, Dave was a Dave Ryan from New Jersey. He was a big fan. And um, I happened to be at the 1984, I was at the Purple Rain concert in St. Louis. So this oh, meant wow. me when, uh, when Prince passed and I asked Dave to do it. And he said, yeah, he would, he would knock it out for me. And look at even when you look at it in person, and even from here, it looks like a photograph. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, wow. And that's great. And and not only do you get Prince, but look who's in the background. Yeah, Up on Apollonia. Yeah. Apollonia is there. <laughs> that is so awesome, man. Oh, I just look at this. I'm like, oh, man, great memories, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like Hart says, ah, early high school music. <laughs> I love it, man. Love it. So cool. All right. Um, so the next two pieces are on this next slide, everyone. Check this out. And I know a lot of you will really appreciate the one on the left um, for obvious reasons. Check it out. Well, yeah, these are also Dave Ryan and um, he had done a bunch of um, sketch covers after, you know, George had passed and he asked me if I was interested. And I said, of course, I mean, look at that imagery and look at Nova. I mean, because yeah. like I said, it looks real. It looks yeah. like a book. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. The Nova. Dave, and, and Dave is available for commissions and um, please reach out if okay. you got. Uh, want some work by him, but his, his and look at my calf gallery and look at the stuff he's done for me over the years. Yeah, is is um is Dave um a um co convention goer? 
Center? No, well, he does. He's in New Jersey, so he'll do some of the closer ones to New Jersey. Oh, okay. He'll local. do those. But he is also very good friends with Rudy Nibrez. Oh, he really? Okay. Introduced me to Rudy, and Rudy, I had some uh, commissions that I got to meet Rudy and his wife and get some commissions through him when they used to have the East Coast Comic Con up yeah. near Meadowlands. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, by the way, do you happen to know... I'm assuming it's it looks very mixed media. Um, Peter yeah, Dott, he, he, media does, he, he does a lot of marker work, believe it or not. And yeah. look at that Nova. I think that's primarily markers and stuff, and he can get it to look like metal and everything. Yeah, what I what I would guess, Peter. Of course, it's just a guess based on the the you know what I'm looking at. So it's a mixed media piece. So yeah, he's got it, it, and an I, ink and he's got markers. I would I would say. Markers and colored pencils mixed because that's the when you, when when artists use both of those, this is kind of the finish that it, it, it ends up giving. So, but who knows? It could be also something else in there. So, but, but he's he's talented to make it look. I mean, you look at that, you know, it's a metal helmet. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, really, really beautiful. Excellent. Okay, two more slides, everyone. Um, this next one has again two more pieces. Love these two. It just like, wow. Also by Dave Bryan. Yeah, and we were ending with Dave Bryan, just FYI. So let's check these two out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, these were kind of unusual pieces for me, but they just kind of, the work, the imagery, how how just, I can't even describe the, the talent that this guy had. And I'm pretty fortunate to have a bunch of people, a bunch of his work in my collection. Yeah, I mean, wow. I, I was speechless when I saw these. I was like, wow, it's so neat. And I don't know, I, I see so many, so many of these, un, you know, to me, unknown names. And I'm like, wow, like, like these guys should be more popular than they are. And their, their names should be I known. Agree. You know, I agree. Yeah. Wow. And um, Rick says, a face only a mother could love. Which one, Rick? Yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, that man bat is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's like, wow. It's like it looks like it looks like looks like the nose got cut off. It's like, mm -hmm. each grotesque and handsome. I mean, it's like it's a like beautiful grotesquerie, really. What we're looking at here. So, yeah, really, really, really gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. So, really happy to show that. And okay, everyone. And before I once again give myself a last minute promo. For next week's uh, Comic Guard shows, we got one last piece. And for this last piece, it is again by the, the same artist, by Dave Ryan. And, um, well, I guess you'll you'll know as soon as I... Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Your sis is saying, the X-Men one reminds me of the garbage pail. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let those garbage pail kids can't let go. Them go. Yeah, yeah. Can't let them go. He's obsessed, you know. It's so funny. Um, yeah, you you guys will know obviously why I chose this one to be the last piece of the evening, and with that, um, let's show it. Here it is. <laughs> Dave, um, I have a uh, I think seventy five uh, mad sketch covers of, yeah. of art from different artists have done. So Dave said he wanted to do one. And he said, well, I want to put you in it. I said, well, Dave, I don't really need to be in it. So he said, take me a selfie. I had never taken a selfie before. I didn't even know how that worked. And I said, Dave, I don't want to take a selfie. We went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Finally he said, take the damn picture. So I was in my computer room and I snapped a selfie and that's what he turned. And I was wearing a white t-shirt, you know, <laughs> he just turned it into that piece. So the only, the only, um, the logo is the only thing that was on the book. The rest of it is original art. Wow. That is fantastic. But I, I got to say, though, Ron, and not not because I want to nitpick, but I got to say, you seem to be much more, like, you're, like here, let me, let me, um, here, let me get it off the screen for a second. I find that that one is more like caricature, caricature because I find he exaggerated the size of your cheeks compared. No, 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 not at all. I've lost like seventy-five pounds since that was done. Since that was taken. Wow. Well, first of all, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. 
Wow, really? Okay, so you're a lot heavier back then. Yeah, I was. Let me, let me see what year. Let's. Oh yeah, 2017. Okay, a long right. time. Ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for you, man. Good for you. Okay. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, at the time, that's exactly what I looked like. Wow. No, it's fantastic. I just, it's yeah, like exactly, Rick. What me worry? Yeah. Yeah, do a do a split do a split screen. Not can't do it. Not not with not when Actually, I have the um the latest one that I have that's in my gallery. Uh, Barry Kitson did the the latest. I, I found some additional blanks and I sent it to England, and Barry did the 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 latest one because oh. I had it mapped out as a separate gallery. It'll say Mad right. Sketch Cup. Right, Barry right. Did the latest one. Yeah, so check that out, everybody in his gallery. Again, the link is below in the description. Below the description, you'll see a direct. Uh, gallery uh, link to Ron's gallery um, of everything. Okay. Um, do you still have the original selfie? Marcus wants to know. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> 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 but let me tell you, it was a big argument over that damn selfie because I really didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it look, look, look at that. He insisted, and look what you end up getting out of it, man. So Come on. I said he wouldn't tell me what he was going to do with it, but yeah. at this he wanted to surprise me. Right. Well, then again, he's an artist, so you kind of would have to figure he's probably. I figured he was going to put me in it, but I didn't know what he was going to have me doing. Doing you know, right could have been something pretty wild. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I get that for sure. <laughs> with Dave spent the humor, it could have gone south very quick. Right, quick. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Hey, uh, thank you so much for doing this ron really like i said it's been a, a year plus in the making and i really 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 i've been wanting you to to do it since then and i didn't want to bother you too much or whatever and that's why i didn't hound you you know um but it was a like for me anyways it was a lot a lot of fun it was as fun as i expected it would be even more so actually so um yeah man i just want to say thanks uh since hey uh, i appreciate the opportunity i know this is not the kind of artwork that you do primarily. I mean, it's a lot of published stuff. And while I do have published covers and pages and stuff, most of which people have given me over the years, but that's just not my main focus. And But um, it's given me the momentum to fill it, finish out these next two sketchbooks. That's great. And no, and, and just so you know, um, yes, I've not been myself uh, 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 a, a commission collector, like I said, other than maybe a handful over the years. Um, so yeah, so I've always hung out in the part of this hobby that is all about the published art, you know, the pages and the covers and all that stuff. Um, and so of course, you know, naturally you tend to hang out with, you know, people in the hobby who kind of collect the same things as you. That's what typically happens, right? So that's, that's kind of why when I do, you know, my show and tells it's, it's about that kind of stuff, you know? Um, but I don't want it to be said by anyone that I am, you know, I, I thumb my nose up at, at commission collecting. I personally, I did a show, I actually did a round table, an, an episode of another series called Comic Art Roundtable, where we had me and three other collectors, and the other collectors were all commission collectors. And um, the reason I did that episode was because I, again, I like to look at vicariously through other people's collections, but I've never wanted to be a collector of these things myself, primarily because of the frustration involved in a lot of the experiences that you probably are aware of that a lot of people mm -hmm. talk about. Um, I'm just not, I don't have the personality to be able to put up with that kind of stuff. Um, so that's, that's one of the main reasons I never got into commission collecting, you know? Um, but it doesn't mean I hate it or have anything against it. Um, I just have difficulty understanding how a lot of commission collectors can put up with a lot of the stuff they put up with. To, to, well, you know. for, for me, I haven't really had bad experiences. I've had a pe you know, people will tell me they're finished something in three weeks and you know, it takes a month and a half because of personal issues. But I find that they make it up for it. You know, give me more detail, do more stuff, maybe do an extra drawing. So I've had that kind of uh, cooperation over the years. But I look at it like this to get like I said, I have a lot of loose page kind of art a lot. But for my sketchbooks and people sitting down and looking through one book as a volume, I've never had anybody not enjoy that, regardless of what kind of art they collect. Right. 
Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, that's I think that's the attitude you got to take. I mean, I'm I'm all about illustration in general, anyways. I mean, and even beyond comic book illustration, you know. Um, so and 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 insofar as not my collecting, but insofar as this YouTube channel of mine is concerned, um, as I said earlier in the show, yes, a lot of it is about showing art and showing other people's art and featuring other people's collections because yes i do want to expose other people's collections to more collectors but more so um different types of art um yes my most of my you know again we, we all hang around with the people that are into the same things we are right so i would say that the majority of the guys that that are nice enough uh, to hang out with me here and, and whoever my guests are uh, and the chat every week from week to week are primarily published art collectors, but not all, not exclusively, right? But primarily, I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, but again, I, I, I still want to show all types of collectors, all types of collections, you know, um, because it's not it's not a hobby where it's just one type of thing and that's it. You know, I don't have tunnel vision, you know, but of course I primarily focus on showing collections by um, of collectors who are into published art, just because again, those are the people that I know. I don't know that many collectors in this segment of the hobby that you primarily reside in. You know what I mean, Ron? Well, I'm glad that you gave me the platform to show people so they get to experience some of what I collect and, how I feel about it, but I've made a lot of good friends over the years, uh, met a lot of good artists, some of which are no longer with us, right. but I've been very fortunate in my collecting and by showing my things and people get to look at it. And if it reminds them of stuff and it, you know, you may be at a tough day and you're looking at some of the art, there's always something that you're going to find interesting in my collection, but I appreciate the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of people, um are are waiting breathlessly for you to add those other 800 yes everyone i said and you know I need to do it because you know they're all scanned but it's just i just i, I just can't bring my and every year it's just more and more but i can't bring myself to just upload it to calf and i should and uh, now and i hope bill will allow me because i think i'm at the max of the different types of um galleries like your inner galleries to be i think you're on you're capped out at like 10 or something like that right. so i would need to add more categories to be able to put the art up i don't know if he's making changes so i don't know that's one of the things he's going to change right. but if he allows me to add more galleries because i don't want to break up the stuff that's already there people I got need it. To see it. Yeah. so if he allows and he allows more galleries i will consider starting to you know bring those things but i do participate in the monthly sketchbook that they have right that primarily when i upload some of that stuff just for the sketch for the uh, yeah. sketch and and marcus mentioned that you have the most contributions to the sketchbook yeah. section on, on i that. missed last month for some reason i didn't think they were doing it but this month is silver surfer and i think i have five or six pieces up there right now um it's interesting nick says Ronald, I think that you can get more galleries if you go up to premium, but he is. No, no, I, I am a premium member. Yeah. I am a premium member, but you're still capped out on how many galleries you can you can do. I'll right. have to talk to Bill about that. There you go. A couple more comments. Uh, the Creative Keep says, great conversation. Thank you, sir. Uh, I learned a lot and I appreciate Ron's storytelling that went along with the art, which is what I love the most about doing show and tells. It's talking about it. Um, each piece has an experience connected with it. Exactly. So Creative Keep you. is a good guy. He's yeah. one of those ones that we talk about when produce when uh, he's buying certain sketch covers. He's okay. a guy I'll reach out to and say, okay, this piece is coming up. I'm not going to fight you on it. Is this is, you know, I give you first crack or he'll give me first crack at it. Right. So yeah, we we love to communicate. He's a good guy. And yeah. matter of fact, he just wrote his first fantasy novel. Oh, cool. Oh yeah. So wow. yes, but he's an excellent writer. Awesome. Way to go. Well, thank you for dropping by, Creative Keep. Appreciate it. Thank you for drop for dropping in and to support Ron. That's awesome. And um, Nick also said, uh, seriously, I do love Ron and appreciative that Ruben bought, uh, brought Ron uh, on the air. Well, no, it's, it's it's my pleasure. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. There's nothing else much to say other than I'm very happy that, uh, that Ron finally did it, you know. So, um, I'm that's happy awesome. too. 
I'm yeah. glad I did it. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Um, now, uh, really quick, uh, let me see any last comments before I don't, I hate to miss comments. Um, excellent show. Okay. Nice variety of artists that are new to me. Excellent. Thank you, Ilya. Um, oh, sorry. That's a lot wrong one. None last month. Okay. Please double check with Bill. Okay. I will. Um, all right. Stevie B says, enjoy the trailer I caught. So I'm going to grab some popcorn and watch the replay from the get go. Excellent. Good night and have a great week. Thanks. Likewise, same to you, um, Stevie. And um, thank you. Really nice of you to say that, uh, says yeah. Creative Keep. There you go. And this book is under the name John Days. Just look him up on Amazon. You won't regret getting the book. John Days. Cool. Thank you, Gil. Thank you. And oh, and great seeing Ruben hitting 70 likes. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for, for rallying them. And without you, it, would, it wouldn't have been past 30 or 40. So I appreciate that, Nick. Thank you so much. Um, Ron, can you just hang on a couple extra yes. minutes? Don't hang up for me. Okay. Thank you. Um, Carl says, thanks for sharing tonight, Ron, and have a great week all. So thank you. I appreciate it, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Um, so yeah. So everybody, I'm just going to leave you again. Um, a quick reminder that uh, next week's shows is a two-part show with uh, heart um, claim shows Saturday and Sunday. So Sunday uh, at the usual time. Okay, um, so that's eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific, and so this this yeah, so this is show until thirteen, right? So that'll be the usual Sunday night show. Um, but before that, please, if you're interested in claim shows, please remember that there's one that we are doing. The first part is happening here. It's number twelve, Comic Art Show and Sell number twelve on Saturday, and that is Saturday, April twentieth at noon eastern all right so for you west coasters remember it would be nine in the morning mountain standard time would be 10 in the morning central time 11 in the morning um of course yes lunchtime noon for for us east coasters and finally you europeans can finally come in live so no uh, my european friends please stop complaining so this one, you have no excuse, but you, you can make it. It'll be only like six o'clock in the evening for you. And for you guys in the UK, five o'clock in the afternoon. And finally for uh, Asia, it'll be midnight. So late, but not too, too late. And then, yes, uh, we will leave you here with this last one. That'll be um, a Sunday at the usual time. So. Um, with that being said, everybody, thank you. Take care, Ronald. Uh, Nick says, Ruben, and everyone, thank you. Uh, likewise, Nick. Um, CJ says, extremely well done job, Ron. And yes, Hart, my buddy and pal and partner. Next week, everybody, see you next Saturday for uh, the sale. I guess you know what? I'll leave you with the Saturday. Here we go. This this is going to be the next one. So. We'll still you all then. So I appreciate it again. Thank you, um, Ron. Appreciate you, buddy. Um, mm -hmm. Stick with me. I'll be with you in a second. All right. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you all. And thanks for hanging in. And thanks all to all of you who watch on Rewind as well. Thank you. See you next week, everyone.